Have you ever been hunted? Like at the like at the zoo, like through the like. Have you ever been to the you zoo? You know, this is one of my triggers, right? Oh yeah. This sorry. Is, yeah. Sorry. Being hunted is a trigger sorry. for me. Sorry. Yeah. But have you? Oh God. <laughs> Welcome to Behind the Sins, presented by Cinema Sins. Welcome to Behind the Sins, a weekly look at everything going on inside the world of Cinema Sins. I'm Aaron Dicer, and I'm joined, as sometimes, by Jonathan Watkins. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> and Danae Hughes. Hi. We write for Cinema Sins, TV Sins, do other various things inside the Cinema Sins universe as well. Uh, yeah, I think we've got it all worked out, guys. I, oh, fingers crossed. Oh, I hope so. We're Don't actually doing an episode. Now, we are doing an episode through Skype, which means we have a whole new set of problems. <laughs> We get to uh, we get to try to do the show with a uh, sometimes nominal and sometimes uh, sometimes substantial delay. Yeah. So it, but, it, it, I mean, the majority of our episodes were through Skype, right? So no, if you like the majority bit. of our episodes, I will I will miss the straightforward conversation element on the phone. I yeah. will miss that. I actually got to talk about the process a little bit on Discord. I've been testing out the voice chat on Discord. Oh, yeah, yeah. How's that? And I've been live streaming, too, where you can, like, stream your camera. Mm-hmm. So I've just been hanging out, testing some stuff out, and we got into a chat uh, on Sunday evening about, like, how we record and how we've been using everything and now we're going to Skype and there's just a lot of interest in the behind the scenes of behind the scenes. Our fans are the best. We just had a fan work with us on scripting uh, something that's going to help make editing our videos easier. And it's mm-hmm. like fans just pop in and are like, hey, have you thought of this? And we're like, no, thank you, genius. You know, <laughs> it's like you guys are the best. Yeah. So it's really cool. Um, Speaking of you guys, if it's okay, here at the top of the show, I would like to, since we have missed, we missed last week's episode Mm -hmm. and everything, I would like to encourage you guys a few more times than normal today to finish the survey because it's actually ending. Uh, We're now at the end of the month, so you have until Friday. So um, whenever you listen to this podcast, hopefully you've already had a chance to fill out the survey if you've wanted to. It's at uh, cinemasins.com slash BTS and in the upper left hand corner as long as you have your pop up uh, blocker disabled you should be able to see a little pop up there and it's just some fun questions so that we can get to know you guys more Mm -hmm. we had uh, pretty low expectations and you've blown away all of our expectations so many of you guys have um, not only filled out the survey but you've signed up for the newsletter and we're going to be doing some fun stuff um, soon as a thank you for listening to BTS and just being part of the CinemaSense fandom and that when you you say Friday, just so everybody's aware, it's November 29th. Correct. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So our survey will end at the end of November um, on the last Friday of November. So this Friday. In 2019. In 2019. Just in case you're listening to this in 2053. Why would you do that? People will. I have a podcast that I'm catching up on from uh-huh. years and years ago. I mean, not, you know, 30 years ago because, well, podcasting wasn't a thing. But, but, but. But isn't our like our show is sort of in the moment. It's about stuff that was released. I don't know that it matters. People oh, okay. catch up on stuff, okay. even if it's about older stuff. I, right. I'm just telling you people Today, do we it. We are evergreen. Do not, <laughs> do not insult us. That's right. <laughs> don't make us sound like we're of the, you can only listen to us the week of. This That's content right. doesn't spoil. That's Come right. Come on. <laughs> um, so thank you guys so much again for all that you have uh, you've done. Thank you for filling out the survey. I will ask you again a couple more times this episode. So just prepare yourself. Oh, good. You just can pop in every uh-huh. once in a while and be like, survey. Yes. <laughs> All right. That's that's my hey, thing. When we share survey. The, survey says. Yeah. When we share this information, can we do it like that? Like survey says. I think yeah. we absolutely have to. Okay. All right. Top five answers. Where do you like to make whoopee? Oh, <laughs> that's my. a different game show. Oh, that is that my. is that's newlywed game. Yeah, that's it? a combo what, newlywed what's family feud. Family like? feud. A hundred people surveyed. I did not ask that question on the survey. <laughs> <laughs> but why not today? I guess I could next time. Uh, send all your answers to feedback nope. at. No, I'm nope. just kidding. No, nope. kidding. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's move. <gasps> we're into- almost to 200 people. Oh, nice. We're 192 at this. So exact when you moment. said you were going to pop in a couple great. more times, did you mean like every 10 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. 
Uh, we are also sorry, speaking of apologizing for things, uh, for the technical issues we've been having. Uh, mm-hmm. Hope that throwing up the, these chips are good for you was... Uh, throwing up. Yes. I hope puking out these <laughs> chips are good uh, was a fun little surprise. But uh, we do apologize for not having a full episode last week. Hopefully we've got everything worked out and uh, we'll continue from here on forward. Well, uh, we were trying to record on a Sunday night, so... Maybe, maybe, maybe Jesus was like, no, <laughs> this is my day. No, no you need to rest. How this, dare you? You're supposed to be home with your family. So, man, you guys ready to get into this? Let's do it. All right. Let's kick it off with this inside scoop. What's he building in there? I've got a secret. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. This is a true story. This inside scoop, by the way, is our number one most beloved, <laughs> according to the survey, our number one most beloved. I hope that's segment. like the majority of the show, so that's probably good. That is yeah. a good, it's good news. We're glad you like this this section because I don't think we'd have a show if we didn't have the inside scoop. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a look at the videos from uh, this past week, the process of sending them, how we felt about the stuff we're sending in general. Uh, A little bit different, uh, since we're kind of on a Rick and Morty run with uh, TV sins, we'll figure we'll talk about the Black Mirror episode as well, even though it was a couple weeks ago, uh, because we lost our conversation on that. And then we'll just talk about doing the Rick and Morty episodes kind of in general, um, and then we'll go through music video sins and cinema sins as well. But uh, let's kick it off with uh, a little bit of deja vu for us. We've had this discussion, but yeah, how do you guys? If you feel- want a recreation? It went something like. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that was my uh, that was my impression of my mic. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how to imitate distortion. (laughs) Sounded like a creature from the Mandalorian or something. That was that was amazing. That was Baby Yoda's voice. Um, (laughs) That's when people stopped liking Baby Yoda. Was when he talked. (laughs) That's exactly right. Uh, I love Black Mirror. It is uh, one of my favorite shows ever of all time. So many of the episodes, because it's an anthology show, they're all different. But so many of them are just spectacular. Like I always feel, anytime there's a Black Mirror season comes out that some of the episodes would land like in my top 10 movies of the year like they're just you know they're just so good and and uh and i enjoy them so much what about you jonathan um i really like it i have not seen every episode in fact i believe i've just watched the first two seasons uh because and i know this isn't necessarily something you have to watch in order although you have told me that they do go back and reference a lot of things they do um, so maybe it's good I'm watching it in order. But um, yeah, I've I've watched the first two seasons. I had seen this episode before, and it's one of my favorites of the ones I've seen. But um, yeah, I've I I think it's a great show. I think it's a great um, I think it's a great like uh, modern day Twilight Zone type show um, that we just don't really get anymore. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, eventually watching everything else. And I think for me, one of the reasons I love it is because it deals specifically with technology. You know, the whole black mirror yeah, thing. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Being our screen. Yeah, this show's made for you. It, it really is. And and I have this thing where I watch it where I'm like, yeah, yeah, worst case scenario for our technology looks pretty bad. Also, can we please have that technology? <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> just like how well, I you interact got, with you the got show. your driverless car sent in here. So. That's right, I did. That's right, I did. Uh, Danae, you don't watch the show. No, I actually hadn't ever watched the show. And so when I was watching the um, video, I had a lot of questions, which seems to happen a lot. But learned that, yeah, this is like a tech show. So that's sort of the common theme. Black mirror is apparently a screen. Didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you turn off your screens, it's just a black mirror. It's true. I actually use that sometimes to try to check my face before I go in (laughs) someplace. Like your phone. Yeah. I'll use my phone just to make sure that nothing is so horrible. You know, it's not not great. Like there's just not all of a sudden like Mm -hmm. it's not coming from your nose. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to do it's when important. your when your phone uh, unlocks with face lock. <laughs> because it's like you try to have a black screen and you can't. It just That's keeps so unlocking. True. That's why I'll never use that feature, I guess. Right. I don't even do up. passcodes. I, I, I do none of all of that irritates me. So if you want to get in my phone, it's very easy. It, oh, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> it yeah. was fun. But I have nothing interesting in there. It was fun to watch it in a way too, and I had I have so many questions about what happened during the show and uh because we've had the conversation already, I know the answers, but I learned things like um that you have this thing installed and you can go back and you can watch memories. Yeah, the grain. And I really enjoyed our conversation, so maybe we can kind of start it up again about how if this was something that we really did, how it would just ruin so much about 
like the moment it would ruin so many things because you would just everybody would sit there and just keep ruminating on the smallest little details and i think one of the examples Mm -hmm. that we gave was like who left the refrigerator door open and then everyone's just sitting there watching that moment so that you can like jump on people rather than shrugging your shoulders and being like you know what it doesn't matter let's just move on i totally disagree i think you know this but i think it's all about how you use the tools right like technology is a tool and we kind of have this in our house already we have cameras in most of our public rooms in our home and my kids will have an argument and we'll be like hey let's go check the camera and so we'll go look and it's actually created really good, healthy conversations about perspective, about how different people see things differently, about, you know, conversations where you think you're saying something, but you're not actually saying it, or just that your brain is so human that you were 100% sure you didn't leave the refrigerator open. And look, you did, you know, like yeah. it's so it's very humbling. It's a good yeah. kind of humbling to That's know, true. you know, oh, I'm I'm wrong about things I'm certain of, you know, and looking at it from other people's perspectives, too, though, like you would just assume just about everybody has this. So that would be really weird, too. I mean, I think people would act differently because you would act like you were always being filmed. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. You would. I mean, think about just something like. If you were choosing to have sex with somebody, um, like a one night stand or whatever, or you hadn't known them very long, I mean, that would have to be a thought process. You'd be like, I'm going to be like in this dude or this woman. Memories uh, forever. uh, Recordings. Yeah. Like they can just go back and watch me having and, sex with them. And really, this episode deals with that several times. It like does. It does. The ramifications sure. of that. And I mean, stuff like that is just like, that's like just I can't that that's more what I think I think about because I'm just like, that would be insane. If I um, if I was to want a technology, I would want to be able to see my dreams played back. Mm. That would be something to be super rad. Do you think that'd be disappointing? Um, Do you I think mean, because maybe. they're so ephemeral? Yeah. Do you think sometimes maybe that's what makes them so awesome to us? Like if we actually live them again, we'd just be like, well, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, probably. Yeah, because there is something fantastical. I don't know that not everybody dreams. And so I, I apologize if this feels like you're being left out of the conversation right now. But mm-hmm. I have very, very vivid dreams and I love to revisit them and like almost zoom in on certain details and try to figure out if like. God is speaking to me or it's some sort of premonition. I mean, I've had dreams. I had this one particular dream one time. Uh, I was on a like a track and field thing at the school that I went to at the time. Mm -hmm. And this person in a red zip up hoodie ran by me and almost knocked me over. And that very exact thing happened that day. And when it happened in real life, it felt like I was like, oh, that was weird. I had this weird chill Mm -hmm. come over me. Yeah. And then I remembered that I dreamt about it. And y'all, when that stuff happens in real life, you're like, this is the coolest. Like, I am in some sort of matrix. This is so freaking rad. Or like deja vu. Mm -hmm. I love deja vu. Yeah. To me, deja vu is like, you're on the right path. It's very similar to deja vu, what you're what you're talking about. Have I told you the the scientific explanation that I heard for deja vu that I love? Mm Mm-mm. The idea is when you experience something, and this could go for the dream as well, uh, when you experience something, your brain misplaces it in your memory. So instead of storing it in short-term memory, it stores it in long-term memory uh, as you experience it. So you feel like you've experienced it in like your past uh-huh. at some point instead uh-huh. of like you're experiencing it now, which I think is re- very it's interesting. It's definitely possible. Yeah. But how do you explain the dream thing? Well, you could be the same thing, right? Like where your memory just places it in the wrong place. And mm. so... It, so it's happening in real time, but I think I had a dream about right, it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you explain waking up and writing it down? <laughs> Couldn't explain that. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, I Did just, you do that? I Did think you it means down? you're crazy. <laughs> I'm just telling some crazy stuff has happened to me through dreaming that's just well, been it, so incredible for my life. And the answer is no, I didn't write it down. Okay. Um, I well, wish I would have now so I could be like, ha yes, I did. <laughs> well, here's, but, but here's the thing. If, if the technology exists that you're talking about where you right. can relive your dreams, you could be like, oh, I'm going to relive live my dreams and then just like the refrigerator maybe you go back and are like oh wait i didn't even dream that what is going on and there? that or, could be disappointing right like you're talking about i do agree there could be disappointment just like in anything that you relive which is why i love living in my moment and mm. really finding joy in yeah. it personally yeah totally so i like that this show brought about conversations like this and if it's something where like I think what I'm coming to realize with the CinemaSense community is that that's part of why you love watching something. Yes. Is because then you like talking about it with people. Yeah. So I'm not used to that. So um, 
I don't know that I would watch Black Mirror just because I would just out of curiosity. I don't know that I would watch it. But if it's going to evoke these kinds of conversations, then maybe I would watch it. Yeah. So well, in the episodes, more often than not, do they're just they're deep like that. You know, they mm-hmm. make you think about what technology is, and so yeah. Would you Would you sleep with a pig if <laughs> uh, if if someone got kidnapped? What? So Danae's giving a look that the very first episode of Black Mirror and anybody who rec- what? every single person who recommends Black Mirror has recommended Black Mirror to me. Oh, my brain just started hurting so bad. St- what starts with this? They say, watch Black Mirror. It's one of the best things on television. Do not start with episode one. <laughs> That's what everybody says, because episode one is about a uh, I think it's the British prime minister mm-hmm. uh, uh, is uh-huh. uh, given an ultimatum. He okay. ha- he has to be recorded having sex with a pig, okay. or the terrorist will blow up Parliament. Or uh, no, they've whatever. kidnapped. Um, they've kidnapped a woman. It's somebody else, like in the government or right. something. Yeah. I can't remember. Who anyway, she terror is. act will happen. You know, unless like he they've, has sex they've with kidnapped a pig. Ferdy mm-hmm. basically or something, yeah. and one of the princesses or something. <laughs> and um, it's actually, I mean, I mean, from a from a storytelling standpoint, it's a super interesting story. Sure. It's just it's a hard thing to watch visually, like if. You, were you watch him it? have sex with a pig? Well, you don't see him have sex with a pig, obviously, but um, they still set it up. So. Uh, Aaron, Aaron may disagree with you. <laughs> well, you, it's well, not like it's porn. But, no, no, yeah, but it's not def- like you're definitely there for the moment. God, well, I mean. Well done. Way to take one for the team, I guess. <laughs> and it has a really, really uh, good ending. Yeah. Like the the stuff with him and his wife at the end. Um, well, but, here's uh, the thing. It also deals yeah. with the, a very important technological question, which is how do the things that we do impact, you know, the, the, the people who will see them publicly because the Internet is so public, social media, mm-hmm. all those kind of things, even if they're for the best reasons, even like, you know, even what he's doing is noble. But it completely ruins him as a person. Like, nobody can look at him in the same way again. Exactly. You know, you know what I mean? And that's so exactly like, what would happen. Yeah. So it's, it, I don't know. It's a fascinating question. It's right, just, I didn't mean to get us off on that. <laughs> no. There was there even was a comment. There was an end for that joke, and so I made it. <laughs> there, good. Th- there's even a comment in the comments that's like, so you didn't want to start with the first episode, and then it's a little pig emoji. <laughs> oh, <laughs> see, now well, that makes when, more sense. I think when I said, Aaron, we decided to do the anthology month, I think I said, like, I do want to do Black Mirror, but we're not doing that first episode, which I don't think Aaron was ever considering it either. No. But, um, no. I actually suggested a different one, uh, but I'm really glad Aaron went with this because I had I had completely just this one escaped my memory for some reason well it performed pretty well and honestly there's plenty of material there so i wouldn't be surprised if if we revisit black mirror in the future so. yeah because and we definitely i mean people requested other episodes like yeah. white bear and stuff like that and i that's, uss that's callister a, that's a possibility uss callister yeah. will probably be up there oh, on the yeah, list that's, a that's, ton of that's fun. another one we had talked about uh but danae what you did you talk about the video yeah what did you think about the video itself um, well, I found it confusing because I didn't have a lot of reference points. And then also, like, I just had a ton of questions like, OK, so he broke a bottle. Does he stab somebody? Does somebody die? And then you guys explain that there was this like deletion of files. And so we kind of already sort of jumped into where what I had watched and my yeah. curiosity led. I always I always find it interesting to watch a video where you have no context going into it because yeah. I have one of those this week. Yeah. So um but I, I mean, I enjoyed what I, what I understood. I enjoyed very much. Jonathan, anything you wanted to bring out from the video um, itself? Um, yeah, penis colada. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know how we don't discuss that. <laughs> now, listen, you know the 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 turn of phrase is always fun. You know me. I I was t- what was it? Just oh, it was on Sif Pop. Uh, Andrew was talking to me. We were talking about the Mister Rogers movie. And he said, you're basically Mr. Rogers if you like the occasional dirty pun. And that's the kind of is my go to explanation of myself. Now, I try to be Mr. Rogers uh, if he occasionally liked an off color pun. But uh, but you could be Mr. Robinson. <laughs> nice. Nice. But the, the point still stands. Movies and TV, for obvious reasons, I guess, don't really deal with sex as an actual thing. You know, they deal with it mm-hmm. as just that, you know, connective euphoria, but they don't deal with the cleanup or, you know, the after effects or in, in, in when I say cleanup and after effects, I don't just mean physical, you know, like even the emotional cleanup and after effects of a sexual experience, you know, TV's not necessarily interested in that. Mm -mm. Um, There there is actually an episode of the league, um, (laughs) which was a pretty off color show 
uh, if you watch that, where they do deal with, um, they talk about the uh, the wet spot. Like that's a pretty, like that's a pretty big focus of the plot of that episode, where it's the you know who has to lay in the wet spot. <laughs> <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> Good for them. Nice. Well, for me, for me, it's all. It, the the most amazing part to me is nobody ever gets up after sex and like yeah everybody gets up after especially from my understanding women should probably get up after sex and go to use the restroom like it's, it's an I important- learned that um, when actually I- men should too <laughs> yes yes cleanliness is important y'all well, it's it- not only the cleanliness there are like medical issues that could yeah uh, uh, there are things that can happen blockages and whatnot uh-huh. uh, UTIs yeah oh yes yep or UDIs. And that's yeah. what this show is all about. <laughs> Settle yes, in everybody. Go to the restroom after sex. And yes. Always make yourself go pee and use a warm washcloth. Mm-hmm. Or else you might catch ooties. Ooties. Yep. Ooties are cooties, uh, but you. <laughs> exactly. And then a, a few other, just a couple other things. Another use of uh, word wordage I liked was vase fuckery. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, and then also we talked about the we went into the babies themselves having the grains, which from what I understand from you and from the comments, there actually is an episode later that kind of deals with that specifically. Yeah, the episode's called Archangel. And I did want to specifically mention that because some people yeah. asked about it in the comments or mentioned it. And uh, yeah, that was specifically a reference to the fact uh, that they take this technology even further yeah. in Archangel with the idea of parents having control over what their kids can see. So like in Archangel... Huh. This uh, this grain not only records everything, but it can also censor things. So you can set your child's settings so that they don't hear certain words or see certain things, you know, in their day to day life. And kind oh, of oh, that's world. interesting. Which you kind of can do that now with a lot of social media right. platforms, which is kind of weird. Yeah. So it's kind of addressing those those things. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, we don't want our daughters seeing certain things, and the way we do. I mean, you know, like seeing adult things, and the way we do that is we we you know we we make sure we're aware of what she's watching and mm-hmm. uh, listening to. But yeah, the idea of actually going in and taking out words and stuff that's just that's a whole other level of. It's fascinating to think of as parents. Crazy. You want to you want to protect your kids. Yeah. And you want them to have a healthy growth experience of understanding what it means to be an adult and you know human and all those kind of things um if you could remove all of that from their site would you and it's i don't know it's a fascinating Mm -hmm. anyway so yeah that was specifically a reference to that i've already uh thought about getting that google tile do you know what I'm talking about? No, what are you talking about? No. How do you know a Google thing that I don't know about? It's like a, Oh, I do know. It's the one that take, pic- takes pictures every once in a while. It's like a small pin. Yeah. So I think it's like a, it looks, almost looks like a square, you know, like those PayPal square mm-hmm. things that you stick in. It's just like a little, it's like a small square and you pin it to a shirt and then it just takes pictures throughout the day at random times and sends them to you to a feed. I've literally mm. thought about putting one on my kid just so I can like just see what her wo- world is like. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've had experience already once at a child care center where I had to get the state involved. And it's like, you know, I'd be nice to have a little bit. Wait, would this happen to you? Yeah. 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 Yep. That, oh, no. That happened back in April. And that's, you know, when I allude to things on uh, social media about like this being the hardest six and a half months of my life, I'm not freaking kidding. <laughs> Like some hard stuff has happened. Oh, that's, maybe, I'm sorry. Maybe I could yeah, strap no, we something got, to her, we, you know, to like peek in on her world. And then yeah. I'm like, well, but don't don't you want to give them the chance to just be themselves and come to you? And it's just it's an interesting because we have the technology where you could like strap a GoPro to a kid. Welcome to Black Mirror today. <laughs> Man. This is the show. <laughs> and I got to say some of these stories I've heard from parents like you, uh, we got really lucky with daycare, I guess, because we had a couple of minor incidents where like like my daughter got bit um, when she was really young um you know stuff like that but i don't know i've, I've heard some horror stories i've lived so one. That, that i could i could understand why people would want that and also i think that would also be though not just monitoring but like you said like seeing her world i think that would just be fascinating right? for a parent i yeah. know yeah i mean it's, it has nothing to do with protection or you know it's more just like i want to know how my daughter sees the world well that is the the google tile is uh, yeah. A very early, early stage of the entire history of you. That is the same concept, right? So it's yeah. it's fascinating to kind of think That's of those crazy. things. That's crazy. Yeah, when you said tile, I thought you meant like Google had created like actual tile that like you put like in your bathroom or something. <laughs> and I was like, how? And Why like, you not? could watch but, videos on your tile. Like but that. you know what? Before we go on to the next thing, I do want to say maybe I'm misunderstanding. And so I, 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 I don't know. I heard the echoes of future internet rage. 
and I went to Google it. Sure, yeah, yeah, tell us what it really is. I think the tile is the one where it helps you find lost items. But oh, there okay, is, yeah, yeah. There is another one that takes photos. I don't know what it's called. Right. If I find out, I'll That's blurt it Google inappropriately. Blast, is it? No, 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 no. Google, no. It's. Yeah, I remember them doing something. I thought it was more of like to set in your home and take pictures every once in a while. But I thought you could pin it to well, maybe your you could. shirt. Maybe you could. Yeah. This but is I'm very similar to, which I didn't see the movie, but I read the book, uh, The Circle. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're uh, right. Which was very much like, I mean, that's, it's Google. I mean, that's, that's what that's about. Yeah. But, um, but that's kind of where they have, where they, they have the person, the test subject, wear that on them, where they're, you know, you see everything they see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's move on yeah. to uh, the Rick and Morty run that we're doing yes. now. Uh, Google Clips. Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> no, you're good. Oh, that Google. sounds right. You knew yeah, it was going to happen. Like that makes I did. sense. I did. I'm just waiting for you to chime in about the survey again. <laughs> oh, we can talk about that. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm glad it's okay. you asked. We can move on. Uh, Catnip <laughs> was what I was. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's like Aaron. I'm glad you guys cat. remembered that. <laughs> uh, let's move on to Rick and Morty. Uh, we're doing a run now. So we've gone through the pilot, which was uh, Chris and I, Atkinson Dicer. Lawnmower Dog uh, was Jonathan and Chris, mm-hmm. Atkinson uh, Watkins. And then Anatomy Park was uh, Chris and I. So, so those are the three question. we've done. Uh, we're going to talk about all three. Is this the first time Chris has written on TV since? As this a primary is the first writer, time yes. anyone has written on TV since other than the three of us. Like, like as a main writer. Yeah, as a primary writer, it's the first yeah. time anybody on the A team has written as a primary writer on TV since. And this was, um, you know, Rick and Morty was kind of a, it was a last minute substitution. Yeah, I it was an emergency substitution. To... Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it was kind of one of those things where we were like, okay. Everybody hustle. Here's the thing. And Chris stepped up and he was like, I love this show. Yeah. He stepped up and he said, do, do, yeah. do, And do, I've, do, I've never <laughs> seen yes, the show we'll the until hustle. now, which I'm, I'm really glad I'm getting to experience it now because I've always wanted to watch it and I love it. Oh, so it's far. so good. And Danae, yeah. this is one you've actually watched, right? Yeah. I've watched every episode and immediately forgotten about it. <laughs> so it's yeah, always Yeah, I still fun. remember, even though that, that recording is going to be lost to time, but I, I thought about this afterwards. You called it the upper crust of R-rated material. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is really oh, yeah. funny because I started thinking like, you know, like... I wouldn't didn't. that go with like wouldn't you say that's like schindler's list or <laughs> yeah like maybe there's comedy. like serious like dramas yeah and... maybe you go r-rated comedy but you have to understand <laughs> it's from my perspective and i haven't seen a lot of content so for right. me i know i know i just i just thought it was funny uh but uh, i kind of want to have on that i want to have some sort of visual thing like where it's the the various you know, like there's the uh, little slices of the earth where it's like the upper mm-hmm. crust of earth or whatever we should try to do something like that at some point where we have like our own versions of yeah, it material. reminds me it reminds me in that way of like big mouth that is also very transgressive mm-hmm. and very adult but at the same time is hilarious and also making some very important points and you know what i mean like there's archer archer is very much in that same vein mm-hmm. yeah you know archer isn't but archer isn't even quite as transgressive as uh, rick and morty or big mouth you know like, yeah that's fair no you're you're right i was just thinking of like handles more adult material but at yeah, the same definitely. time it's like super smart yeah uh, yeah. But yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's not. It's definitely not as transgressive. Um, this has been really fun to uh, launch these. In fact, we just launched uh, today the Me Seeks and Destroy episode as well, which, which is my favorite episode so far, which we'll talk about uh, in a future week. Um, but uh, for these three episodes uh, specifically, what are some of the things that, you know, you guys enjoyed, uh, liked? Nene, let's start with you since you didn't write on any of these. Yeah, I didn't write on any of these, but I did actually reach out to Chris. And so because I wanted to know what he thought and yeah as a primary writer yeah sure he said that sitting rick and morty is a daunting task because it's comedy and it's a far-fetched one at that and so um but he had to watch each episode several times to generate you know enough content content yeah yeah which is something that sometimes happens when you're watching something that just isn't as easy you kind of struggle with it so it sort of seemed like maybe that was happening for him he says mainly rick and morty despite their self-awareness still have to break their rules to tell a story um and then he kind of goes into some specific episodes which i know we're going to talk about but his, sure. his general thoughts are kind of my experience sometimes in, in sitting as well watching the watching them uh, reminds me that i i really don't remember as much as i thought that i would i 
I remember liking it, but I totally binged it. It's like kind of one of those where you're watching it and you're really not absorbing it. Mm -hmm. I remember having a good time. I remember laughing. Um, And then when you're watching the Sins video, it's like, oh, I don't remember any of this. Like the... Mm -hmm. I don't remember um, like zero of the whole uh, anatomy park. Oh, really? Zero. That's a great well, episode. And they, and they pack a lot in yeah. 22, 23 minutes. So it's not, I don't find it odd at all that you don't remember everything. Because if I went back and watched these that I just watched a couple days ago, I'm sure I'd find very new things. Well, they do this thing that I, even catch. That I actually really love. And that's, you know, it, it turns a direction, then it turns again, it turns again. It's not really like linear storytelling as much as it's just wackadooness. That's just sort of, mm-hmm. and there's really um, brilliant uh things happening with like what the characters are saying and some of it's just deeply intellectual and it causes you to think but then it like turns on its head and you've got like there's just so much coming at you that unless you really slow it down and watch it and absorb it yeah i i totally i i i understand now why i've launched most of it because it's just really hard to keep it all in your head yeah I mean, I'll say, in sp- and they, and they, um, like clearly, the people involved in the writing and everything are are very aware of the subject matter they're uh, going after, or because, like, in the like, I'm very familiar with the Nightmare on Elm Street series, and then I worked on the Lawnmower Dog episode, and they have the whole scary Terry bit, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like, I was just amazed because I've seen a lot of things make fun of Nightmare on Elm, Street, and I've never seen anything like this though um they clearly knew the subject matter very well like from front to back i mean there's crazy references yeah yeah and the, the same, same with time the, the, they were able to make it very funny very smart sure well um, just it's just it's i mean i just i don't even know like I, i'm i'm really i'm really curious how they go about writing an episode and well, it involves probably drugs sorry aaron what were you gonna say probably yes <laughs> you're probably right well and we should also mention this is um i all of a sudden i forgot his name dan this Harmon. Is, Dan Harmon, who created Community. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say is Dan Harmon, he, he, he kind of has this comedic intellect that you can see in his other properties. A lot yeah. of the, the meta stuff that you see in Rick and Morty, he tried out in Community. There are some really interesting things that happen in Community. Uh, you can even see it in his D&D show that he does now, um, Harmon Quest. You know, there's, mm-hmm. there's some fascinating stuff there. And you can also see a lot of the process, I think, of writing these episodes in, the, in Harmon Quest because that is completely improvisational. You know, they're they're playing D and D, and D and D is an improvisational game, right? But where is that available? Um, it's on. V, uh, what's it start with the V? Um, Vimeo. No, the the service. Voodoo. No, no. I guess there are a couple that start with the V. Venereal. <laughs> nope, definitely not that today. Uh, I'm just, I was just curious because even though I'm not a D and D person, VRV. I, I'm, I'm a Dan Harmon person. Yeah, so. VRV. That sounds right. I'm really curious to check it out. Are you impressed? Yeah. Yeah. Did you use Google? Yeah. Use the Googles? Heck uh, yeah, I did. VR Google tile. <laughs> VRV is, is where it's available. But you can see, like, even when you look at the animation of Rick and Morty, I, I think they're probably just doing a lot of improvisation within a, in mm-hmm. a structure. And it's probably very loose for them. And they're just funny guys. And they just... Yeah. Because, it, because the show, like Danae said, is, is kind of ramshackle. It kind of goes from place to place. And it goes wherever their brains want it to go. They have the structure of whatever they're parodying. Like Anatomy Park is obviously Jurassic Park. And they know that yeah. material so well. The show itself is a parody of Back to the Future. You know, the idea of, you know, yeah. Doc and, and Marty being Rick and Morty um, is in the characters are very, very obviously, so, yeah. you know, you know, um, parodies of those. So they, they have that parody structure, but then it just allows them to go wherever they want to go. Um, so well, I imagine that, it's, yeah, it's the same in Lawnmower Dog because that starts off as like an inception. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they're, I don't know if it's necessarily a parody, but they're definitely commenting on Inception. I get the yeah. impression Dan Harmon is not a fan of Inception. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And, um, but yeah, but then it goes off into Nightmare on Elm Street. And then plus you have also going on at the house, you have the stuff with the dog, yeah. uh, which is its own storyline. There's just so much that's happening. And, and that's where I think the quick pace of it is something that I, I really appreciate because, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of computing power up in my brain. Um, and it's, it's something that kind of challenges you as, as you're watching it. And also it means you're missing some things and you know it and you kind of appreciate that. Which it makes it really great for what we do in some mm-hmm. ways too, because you can kind of zone in on that stuff. But I, I agree with Chris's comment totally in that it's just, sometimes these are really hard because you know, you're like, you're reaching. Um, I'm actually sending an episode of Rick and Morty and I'm really challenged on it. Yeah. So at the same time. These are the best kind of things to emphasize the truth 
of our uh, tagline, which is no movie is without sin. No TV show is without sin because, you know, as brilliant as it is, Mm -hmm. like Chris said, they still have to use convenience. They still have to use, you know, the fact that, you know, Rick, anytime he needs something, he just happens to have the exact device he needs in his lab coat. Like, you know, that's that's story convenience. Mm -hmm. You just you have to do it. And that's Mm -hmm. and that doesn't make it bad. It just makes it a sin. Um, But it is interesting that all of you have talked about writing on and having a bit of a hard time. And I worked on Lawnmower Dog. And I don't know if this is just because that was literally the second episode I watched ever because, the you know, it's the second episode of the series. I had never watched the series before. So I watched the pilot, even though I didn't work on the script. Um, and then I watched Lawnmower Dog. And I actually didn't really have um, a hard time finding Sin. Oh, I'm Jonathan and I'm so special. No. <laughs> I, I'm brilliant. But <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. What I'm saying is, though, I... I wonder if sometimes having that attachment to it makes it harder. It could be. Sure. Um, um, and there's also things I send that Chris, you know, was like, oh, yeah, but that gets explained later. And right. So, you know, so there's stuff I didn't know either. That is something, too. You know, Chris, lo- uh, having watched all of them and really liking the material was a, like yeah. a no brainer for him to jo- jump in and join in. Um he did have more to say specifically about episodes to our point that we're talking about. He says, um, like in Lawnmower Dog, they're trying to follow the rules of Inception, but mm-hmm. they end up doing the exact opposite of Inception by directly telling the people the thoughts that they want them to have. Uh, the pilot episode, how Rick scolds Morty for not wanting to go with him to get those seeds because he can't do it by himself. But we find out later that Rick has been to that planet before to get those seeds by himself. And that's the type of error uh, the show makes in the service of a joke without thinking about what's been established sort of in the world. Right. And that's exactly what we're talking about, you know, as far as, it, but it's well, so, it's, it's so fun, right. but there's still, like you said, it does not without its sins. And, and it's a show that doesn't care because in a show like this, it yeah. can explain away almost anything sure. like you, you can, in the comments will, by the mm-hmm. way, if you go to the comments of these videos, uh, a lot of the problems we have, people are like, well, you could explain it like this. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, you sure could, but the show doesn't, yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's kind of one of those things. My favorite one that Chris uh, talked about was he kind of went off on the absurdity of, um, um, anatomy park because it really got him thinking about whether the park had actually been open for business this whole time yeah. um, or like Jurassic Park. He was awaiting its opening. He says the show goes back and forth with its clues about this. And if it's been open, that means there's more pe- people who have been willing to get shrunk into a homeless person. And Rick's been doing this in secret for some time or it's never been open. And some of the things like the girl who gets written up at the churro stand doesn't make any sense at all. And mm-hmm. I love that I had to read that. <laughs> like that's the craziness of this show somebody right. shrinks people down sticks them in a homeless person you know um he all he ends his comments by saying it's just fun knowing shows like rick and morty still have to adhere to some tv structure rules that cause quote-unquote problems with pot- plot holes and stuff as they try to entertain as much as possible in 21 minutes and try to wrap it up usually uh, try to wrap up a usually complex story yeah yeah well because that's another thing with like network television and, and basic cable television is that um, there, you know, you're you're kind of uh, you're kind of tied to this format, mm-hmm. um, and no matter how how good you are at writing or creating a show, you still have to make it fit within that format. Whereas if you were doing something for a streaming service, you don't necessarily have to do that, right? Um, so that, that, you know, we can play with stuff like that as well, which is always fun. I just, I really enjoy, um, the comments. This is, it seems to be the kind of show that, uh, everyone's on board with doing more and more and more of, which we've seen before. I mean, there's people that are like, do every episode of friends, do every episode of this. But with Rick and Morty fans, it's almost like a fever pitch it feels yeah. so uh it's it's fun to just put something out that you guys are enjoying so much yeah for sure uh any specific things from the videos you guys wanted to to bring up that you enjoyed um well in 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 the pilot this was just a play on words but i loved the uh, morty full of grace I yeah just, the idea that we had a maria full of grace <laughs> um, it, it just <laughs> just the references we pull out of our uh brain sometimes <laughs> Brains. I'm glad Even you know. I know brains. we all know these things. <laughs> yes, uh, brains. Yes, brains. Not ass, just brains. But um, I know we all like you know most of us have a have a pretty deep knowledge of like film reference and stuff. But it's still just the crazy the crazy ones that come out. Like I mean, I hadn't thought about Maria Fuller Grace probably since like the year it came out. Right. So. Yeah. Um, and then um, in in Lawnmower Dog, since I worked on that one, that was a lot of fun. Um, Chris talking about the playing around with the Inception stuff was fun. And I I got to admit, I'm not an Inception fan. Um, Ooh. I don't I don't I don't dislike it, and I I love it visually, and I 
I think there's some good stuff in there, but the uh, when you start breaking down the story, it it I get I don't know it makes me mad. I, yeah. I don't know how else to explain it. There there are things I think there's gaping holes in that movie that I seem to be alone in. So maybe I'm wrong, but um, I enjoyed the show playing around with that. But at the same time, I liked the you know we were specifically Chris Moore were were poking at that while they're making fun of it, they're also having to play along with the same rules, right? So I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Um, and then in the anatomy park, the one thing I noted was that you got another snow shovel. I assume it was you. You got another snow shoveling in. Oh, what was that? Which, which it was one? just something about at the beginning. Oh, yeah, I, I the, just wrote. They shoveled snow. half their driveway. Yeah. Who shovels yeah, half your driveway? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was Aaron. You can tell. They, drove, they, they shoveled their entire walkway from the door, but only <laughs> half their driveway. I also love that we called John Oliver Germ Oliver. Yes, no, that was good. That's good. Um, but uh, and to go back before I get people like turning us off and hating me, I, I do think Inception. <laughs> no, I just, it's fine. I, no. I We're allowed to have our um, opinions. But yeah. I know, but that movie is like heavily loved by people. Well, I just, I just don't get it. I don't get the love. But if, uh, if you need me to talk about a heavily loved, you know, movie that I don't like, I can do that. So you have, you know, you feel no, you're good. kinmanship. Uh, Danae, what about you? Um, I really liked uh, Anatomy Park again because I totally had forgotten about it, and I all the bacteria references and just the convenience of just these different crazy things that were happening inside, and just yeah. all the references to like this is not actually this kind of bacteria. This is a virus. It's well, yeah, and that's it's strange when Rick and Morty makes that kind of mistake because they're usually so detailed, and you, you wonder know? if they did it on purpose, right? You know. You genuinely I think I even wonder. wrote a sin about that, or maybe that's in a future episode. But I, 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 I know I've written a sin in one of the Rick and Morty scripts that's basically like the thing with Rick and Morty is they might be doing it on purpose, and that's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I'm here to do a job, right? <laughs> like I but I don't know. That. I don't know. Well, uh, like we were talking. Speaking of that, I'm sorry, but that just made me think when I did that Fast Times at Ridgemont High outtake for Lawnmower Dog. Um, Chris and I were talking about how it lined up so perfectly well. And then, but as far as I know, like Dan Harmon might have very well had that scene in mind, right? When he was doing the scene in the show, I mean, that's how smart this show is. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But sorry to interrupt. Oh, you're totally fine. Um, I loved the marriage just barely working cliche that was mentioned in the dog episode. (laughs) Uh, that genuinely made me laugh um and then the whole point about all the dogs going through the portal and that the world is just committed to never having a dog in the episode again Mm -hmm. you know just that's something that i would then look for as i keep watching because it's just a fun a fun reference and i well let's just say the one that dropped today uh, already has a reference okay to that sense well good good um and then the outtake with the dog saying i love you at the end of the dog one where it's the husky that's like, I love you. <laughs> yeah. I loved that clip when I first saw it because huskies are fascinating to me because mm-hmm. they just sound like people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so hearing that, uh, I thought that was just, I, I first of I guess I should say this too. Every single time I think the outtakes on these are just brilliant. I, I've loved fun. almost everything that I've, the outtakes are, it's really fun in animation because you can do so much because yes. the mouth is just moving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Animation is the best to do outtakes for because the lips mm. don't have to line up at all. Like as long right. as their chin's moving, it looks perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No, that's so I thought you guys did a great job. I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, the only one I would mention is uh, in one of the the first three, we literally say, ah, the sins don't matter and, and give the sin. Mm-hmm. And in the comments, it was like that was a big revelation to some people. And I'm just, I, you know, it just it's a reminder to me that there are still people who think that we equate sins with reality or reality <laughs> or that it makes it a you know a bad thing and it's just like no this 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 series is like i said the perfect example of what we do which is this is obviously brilliant you know uh storytelling in in comedy and tv making and we're finding the little things in it the little cheats that they had to do to tell us these brilliant that the things that would be worse without the sins that's what people you know forget sometimes uh, is that some of these sins the thing would actually be worse uh, if they quote unquote well, fixed it. So, and I'll, you know. I'll do a little behind the scenes thing, which I think we might've talked about this a little bit with Riverdale, but I don't remember if I got too much detail on this, but Danae had a sin where she added like 12,500. I sure and, did. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, we're not doing that. And then she came <laughs> back and she was like, but the sins don't matter. I was like, no, they definitely don't. But I don't want to have to sit there and try to figure out if, if the numbers are correct. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> like just the idea of my brain having to like sit there and go, okay, is, is it 12,503 now? Um, was just like, I was like that, that's going to be so annoying for both of us. So let's do 125 instead. <laughs> <laughs> 
these so these they really the, don't matter these are the wonderful negotiations of script writing yeah. in the yeah. sins universe <laughs> and no, i, I, I really want to be have clear i did not just say no we're not doing that i just yeah. said like uh maybe we should do this instead mm-hmm. uh, uh we ready to move on to music video sins let's do it it's your catchphrase now you might as well just embrace it <laughs> Yeah, Miley Cyrus Wrecking Ball. I've never seen this video. What? Wow. I I have seen it a lot. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. now understand why. I've seen images from it. Yeah. Obviously, it's pretty yeah. like pretty amazing because it's just like one of the most known videos of all time. I think this song is great. I I just think this is it an is. incredible. It, it really song. is, and it's it's a song that I started appreciating more like years away from. It also has, sense. yeah, no, it, it, it does. That song's grow on you like that. It, yeah. it also is one of my favorite stories of a friend of mine had his viral moment with this song. Do you remember this, Danae? You were kind of uh, in on this as a friend from our radio days. Uh, he's a big fan of a college basketball team, and he had seats behind the, the backboard for one of their big games that was televised. And uh, right, you know how people will uh, distract. distract the free, fr- free throw shooter? kind of thing Mm -hmm. we've talked about this with boobs before (laughs) yes yeah we have that was a picture uh but (laughs) the guy's getting ready to shoot a free throw and he just starts belting at the top of his lungs i came in like a wrecking ball that's awesome and he was the only one and you can clearly hear it on the tv and the guy misses the free throw and he was just like a he was like a crucial part of the game he was like a hero at the college uh for a while um i just thought that's one of my memories with this song. I totally forgot about that. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, that's really good. So yeah, I had never seen it. So watching the Sins video, I actually skipped watching the whole video. Oh, okay. Because I was like, I, I think I understand she comes in on the wrecking ball. Right, it's just yeah, wrecking yeah. things. And um, so we, we send a video last week, Lost to Time. It was Kanye West. There mm-hmm. really wasn't a lot that happened in that video. And there's really not a lot that happens in this one. But this is so much better because at least the lyrics are delicious. What makes it, uh, well, So what makes it a good video for you? Like what? When you say this is a good music video as opposed to the Kanye one. She's naked on a wrecking ball. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't Kanye know. I don't was know naked on a wrecking, to... <laughs> wrecking ball? I, I do think now, like, now that I've like, you know, you, you've had like, year, you know, I've seen this video many times like Aaron. And I think at first, of course, much like there's a sin in the video where it's like, oh, she's naked. Um, but I think after you reflect on it for a while or after you've seen it a bunch of times, this is very well shot. Like I love like there's that whole like opening where it's just on, it's just that close up on her face for yeah. like basically that opening the first is powerful. Verse. Yeah. And it's. It's awesome. Like, I don't know why, but it's just, it's very effective. It makes the song, it, it does what a video should do. <laughs> you know, there's sometimes when this, so to, to answer your question, there's sometimes when the simplicity of a video, mm-hmm. it really like enhances the lyrics, it enhances the emotion. And I think that happens in Wrecking Ball. Yes. With Kanye, I, I did not feel like that video, the ballet dancing juxtaposed to this, you know, uh, out of tune piano in a, warehouse Mm -hmm. with a whole bunch of people i didn't understand how that made the lyrics stand out even more Mm -hmm. it just didn't to me it didn't make a lot of sense so but i that's the main difference between the two there's a simplicity in both of them but i i I like the simplicity in miley's video much more um barrett talked about this a little bit i got to hear from Mm -hmm. barrett so if you want me to share some of his thoughts his, his thoughts he loves wrecking ball uh, he likes the song, the video. It was famously billed as the, quote, one video without sin, unquote. So I don't know if maybe there hmm. were, uh, that's kind of like the the feel of the video. Is it like this is a perfect video or whatever? Or was it a joke they made at one point? I don't know. Yeah, like an in, like an inside joke because of how much everybody loves Miley Cyrus. Like, Naked. Yeah. Um, you know, well, I no don't, Miley Cyrus in I know, general. I know, I know. She's a, she I'm being has silly. a beautiful body. I'm not saying that that's um, not a reason to like well, her. Well, one thing I was thinking when you were talking about the simplicity, though, because this is a rare song where when I hear it, I think of the video. And I think the obvious correlation to that would be that she's naked in it. But I've written for this channel, and I can't even tell you how many, like, Nicki Minaj and Ariana Grande and Cardi B. I mean, you know, video Rihanna videos where these women are also as clothed, if not less clothed than she is. And I don't remember a thing about those videos. Right. Um, yeah. So there is something else to it, obviously. There, than- there's something really uh, thought provoking about somebody mm-hmm. riding in on a wrecking ball. It's mm-hmm. just a really beautiful visual. And mm-hmm. well, even this, the sins video talks about the um, her getting hit by shrapnel or whatever, or those kind of things. I think that's intentional in the video. Her, her vulnerability is yeah. part in the destruction. Mm-hmm. It's like this 
beautiful metaphor for ending relationships where yeah. you're completely exposed, completely vulnerable, completely in danger. And at the same time, you're also, you know, wielding a sledgehammer and a wrecking yeah. ball and, you know, like, wielding or licking. Well, um. <laughs> and she's doing she's doing different types. This is this is I mean, this was the Ballers album, I believe. It makes and this sense is if it very was. much more adult for her. Um, because Barrett, it's not party in the USA. Right. And it's he not did, Disney Channel. He did explain his comment. I just didn't continue to read. Sorry, oh, Barrett. Sorry. And now you're listening going, what the hell, Danae? There's more to that sentence. <laughs> sorry. Fa- sorry. So he says it was famously billed as the one video without sin in the introductory video for MVS. Oh, uh, okay. So that's that. Uh, Jeremy also is a big fan of this. Just interesting note. Um, this is, according to Barrett, the creative peak for Miley, so far at least. So it's the best Miley. The only negative is that it was directed by Terry Richardson. Yeah, I did some research on this. Big old creep yeah. that has sexually harassed his models. Miley apparently had no issue, but there are many other women. So he did. Yeah. He did want to mention that too. That, that- I, I did too. I it is it is one of those weird things that we're going to continue to deal with as we deal with the gross humanity of people who make good stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And Terry Richardson appears, uh, based on the the firsthand witness of many women, uh, to be one of those gross people who does very gross and inappropriate things. Um, you know, it's it's interesting. It kind of reminds me, like, there are some people in my past who are, like, now, looking back, horrible people. But they provided me such wisdom. And so I take that wisdom, and it's still a part of me today. I just leave the rest. Isn't and that so crazy? It is, but that's humanity in a way. I know, and I'm not, God, I am not just. Dis- so cra- I have, I mean, I have people in my past that like, like old bosses and stuff that like, I look back and like, you were a, you're just a horrible person. Mm-hmm. But there were things I learned, you know, yeah. there were things that I still to this day, non creepy things or non asshole ish things that I still take with me. It taints, it taints some of the whatever you bring with you. There's always an element of like when I think about what, um, and I'm just going to use a name, when I think about what Rick taught me, there's parts of, what he taught me that I will value forever. But whenever I say his name or I think back on those memories, there's just a little like, oh, that's a bummer. And that's going to happen with art too, because, Mm -hmm. you know, people are assholes. And so in this case, it's sort of, you almost have to try to look at it alone and then look at it in context and and also you know pay attention to both and so. every, everybody's entitled to their own perspective and their own reaction to those things uh because some people when, would boycott it exactly and be like, I some never people are like i'm that. never watching a woody allen movie ever again and right. i'm like okay you do you you know like but and we, that's okay but or we Kevin have spacey movie or, or yeah right sure and and but we all i think we all should be um give grace to how not only uh, not only people handle this, but to others who handle it differently than you. Yeah. Um, and none and none of it is hard too because I think in our culture sometimes if you say, "Oh, this is such a great music video," it's equated to, "Oh, you agree that this person should," yeah. you know. You do know Terry Richardson directed right. that, right? But the an- the the answer to that is like, nope, not until Barrett told me, and I didn't even know who that person was, and you know I didn't what I'm saying. Either. So, the, the, you know, we all just kind of take into account once you realize that there's a conflict it's up to you individually to understand how you want to interact with that conflict and right. you know for me um i look at that video i listen to the song and i appreciate it and would i want to support somebody who is you know like this person is probably not does that mean that i won't go watch the video for me it could be i don't know yeah i do have a question for you today so when you were watching her when she was fully nude on the wrecking ball I just want to Did know, you get was feelings her vagina of cold? protected? Like, That's, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it's the one thing I'm like, okay, so is the, please tell me that there's like some kind of like a comfortable saddle there for her girl bits. There has to be, but you right? can't see it. That's a, nope. I mean, that's amazing filmmaking right there, I think. Yeah. There has to be something there. Like a little girl guard. Because even know? I'm like, I'm even like sitting there going, God, that's got to be so cold. <laughs> And then there's like, and there's, uh, you, and you know, there's the like temperature. dust and wood chips. And I, I, I would not be surprised if, if she did have a guard of some sort. I also would not be surprised if she didn't. Miley Cyrus is, I mean, she's, she's, she's an emboldened. She's a very bold that, person. Oh, that is very I actually, true. I super appreciate that about her in, in a really interesting way. It, it's really yeah. growing up with her in the, in the spotlight, like she has over the last like 15, 20 years or whatever it is. It's really weird to go from Hannah Montana to now. And, you know, it's very easy during the Hannah Montana days, especially because I was older and didn't have a kid at the time that watched it. I had like nieces and stuff, but to be very annoyed by her personality. 
Her, um, her TV but personality. I, but I, ma- I have I have mad respect for her now. Yeah. I mean, uh, she's awesome. Let's yeah. talk about the the sins video itself. I just had a couple things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I loved the the Ryan Johnson, J.J. Abrams cocktails line. Um, yeah. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, not how wrecking balls work. I thought was really funny. <laughs> uh, the observation, the observation uh, that there was two different wrecking balls. You know, that one was smaller yeah. than the other one. I thought was a really uh, good observation. So yeah, there was and and I was glad that we at least did mention the Terry Richardson thing and gave a ton of sins. Uh, for that at the end. I think we, I think uh, that was done in a very appropriate way. Well, I think um, like so. uh, music video sends, because I think a lot of people might not know who that is. And I mean, immediately when I saw that, I didn't get it. So I looked it Same. up and I was like, Same. holy shit. Yep. Um, uh, the one that I liked was the sledgehammers go through asbestos to hose it off before you make out with it. Just the whole, just zooming in <laughs> on her. licking that sledgehammer, well, she man. she licked the chain, too. Just, like, everything about the, the whole licking. Well, but, like, again, it's so metaphorical. Then, it's such yeah. this beautiful, like, relationships are this thing of destruction that we just give ourselves to or can be, you know? And so we're giving a lot of destruction and power to someone uh, with our relation. I don't know. I, what's, I, the, what's the metaphor for Drew Barrymore licking the wheel of the <laughs> <laughs> the steering wheel? And, I, I don't know that that's metaphorical. <laughs> I just say, think Drew Barrymore just wanted to lick something. That guy? Yeah, and, yeah, she was. <laughs> I don't know. I think licking anything that's used, I don't, I, I just don't get it. I didn't, like, it's supposed to be the super sexual kind of thing. Licking is very seductive. Like, it's a very sexual and all thing. I can, all, all I'm thinking is gross. Like, yeah. That is so gross. I really appreciate that sin because uh, I wasn't. I wasn't enjoying well, that at all. Well, that's the cognitive dissonance, right? Like that's 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 the beautiful cognitive dissonance is gross. And <laughs> I'm also, literally going, "Do you know where that's been?" And then the wasn't sin, there a, w- and then the sin's like the same thing. And I'm like, "Thank you, God, was thank it, you." Was it this one or another <laughs> one this week that had the line, "Why is boner?" Uh, was that? Oh yeah, I can't remember which video that so was. So funny. But that is kind of the the cognitive dissonance, it, right? It's like, why is boner? Why is this turning me on? And also, really, oh, disgusting. No, that was uh, no. I wrote that. That was Rick and Morty. It was when uh, it was oh, when yeah. Scary Terry and his wife were yes. yeah. making out. Yes. Yeah. Oh god, so funny. Why yeah. is boner? That was a uh, play on uh, why is this scene? Mm-hmm. Why this just, scene? Yeah, I was just like, why is boner? Mm. Uh, anything else from? Uh, this video we wanted um, to, to I chat really about? liked I mean I, I liked our creative way I don't know I mean I liked our way of using it's just the tip um, and uh, the 1984 Apple commercial shout out was great well and so accurate oh yeah 100% and um, I love the uh, when she was naked on the wrecking ball the, the acknowledgement that she was still wearing Doc Martens <laughs> it was like do you really still need the Doc Martens <laughs> yeah yeah good stuff uh, ready to move on to cinema sins I'm ready all right, uh, we'll start with Aladdin 2019. Uh, this was a uh, Dicer Scott script. This was Jeremy and I, who, by the way, re- wrote on uh, the original Aladdin just earlier this year. Jeremy and I wrote on that. So, and so did I. I. It was remember. my first I one. I thought that was right. Mm-hmm. Wasn't yeah. it my first one? It was one of your very first shat- like, That's right. shadowy ones where uh-huh. like... I got to add in some of mine mm-hmm. because remember, Jeremy was impressed that I thought that Carpa could also be a girl. That's right. That's my claim to fame, <laughs> my famous sin or she. <laughs> What's interesting about writing on both of them is speaking of deja vu, so much deja vu writing because it's the I'm same sure. movie. And in fact, we reference it in the script that one of these days we'll just run the same narration over the, we should do that for lion king we should just run the old lion king narr- narration over the same sins uh because it a lot a lot of the sins are the same so that was kind you, of an interesting you like experience this one though right yeah let's start there uh i'm i guess i'm the weirdo that really enjoys this movie no, no. um that's not why I said that, because this is one of those videos where it's really interesting where you, you can, even though like we do send video movies we all like, mm-hmm. uh, this was one where you could definitely tell one of you really hated this movie. Yeah, that would be Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was very similar to The Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, yeah, which was a, a Jeremy and I script as well. Let's just yeah. say when Jeremy and I are disagree on a movie, you're going to hear more from Jeremy than me, probably, <laughs> in that and, movie. And it was uh, weird because I like this movie fine um i do too i don't love it but i think it's fine yeah the but what, what's really weird and jeremy will probably hate me because of this the animated aladdin like i'm on the same level he is with that in fact that's probably my favorite animated disney movie yeah. non pixar um it's definitely one i've watched the most probably 
as an adult at least yeah it's a ton of fun um, i haven't seen so it so i really had no interest in seeing this not because i thought it would suck but just because i you know i just didn't see the point like you a mean lot you of haven't people. you mean you haven't seen the new one mm-hmm. he's talking about the old one. Oh, i have seen that one. yeah yeah mm-hmm. oh, since that you was, just yeah, said the you old one it, is my yeah. favorite not not the new one but i didn't but but even though that's the case i still enjoyed the new one even though yes will smith is no robin williams as far as that role goes will smith brings his own uh, persona to it and i think it totally works yeah i i think i had even written a sin removal for will smith that yeah. uh acknowledged uh, that you're never going to be Robin Williams, but yeah. this is about the best you can do. Like, yes. you know, uh, I, I found his performance different enough to not be, you know, like he's trying to do the same things Robin Williams did. Mm-hmm. And also Will Smith enough that it was like, yeah, this is how Will Smith does the GD. You know? Well, and the Prince Ali number is a prime example. And I was tweeting about this and Jeremy even got in on that tweeting thread and was like, like, yeah, I disagree with you. But um, <laughs> that's well, a is- moment where I feel like Will Smith like brought his own kind oh, of yeah. panache to to the role and well, it see, was like there was a moment in that where he was just he was being will smith yes it was so much fun yeah see here's the here's the thing and, and this is again behind the curtain is what we do so jeremy wrote uh the sin that made it into the mm-hmm. video about uh how that song slows down and takes all the energy mm-hmm. out of the original and we left it in as a sin uh i had written a sin removal for that song that said <laughs> the way that this takes this song and changes it to Will Smith uh, is so much fun or something like that. I could look up the original um, what I wrote. But um, but for me, the way they change the music to be more like there's more of a sway to it. Mm-hmm. There's more of a funk to it. Yeah, uh, is really fun. And especially in that Prince Ali number, I that's my favorite track on the album is the new Prince yeah. Ali yeah, um, cause, I think cause it's great. The, I mean, because I, I, I did like the bit in the ne- in the video itself, the never, uh, never have a friend like me. I didn't like that version as much. And I did agree with Jeremy that, it, and, and you might have had something to do with this too, but I did agree with the idea that it just made you miss Robin Williams just because yes. he's no longer with us. Yeah. Um, not necessarily, and that's not a knock on Will Smith, and that's not Will Smith's fault. And I'm sure that gave him a lot of thought before he took this role. Right, I'm sure. Uh, because you definitely, in that scene, you're just like, God, I miss Robin Williams. Yeah. <laughs> but not because Will Smith is bad. You know, it's just a, it's a natural reaction to, uh, you know, a force of nature like Robin Williams was. Absolutely. Uh, not being in this world anymore. But yeah, like I, like I agree with you on the Prince Ali. Like you get a lot of the, aha, aha, and you know, now yeah. the ladies. And I, I don't know, it's just, there's something so fun about that. In fact, it was so funny, even though you guys send that part after the video, I actually went back and watched that again. Yeah. Uh, the actual from the movie. I watched that sequence again just because it popped in my head. I'm like, I want to watch that now. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, fun. Uh, Danae, what do you think about the video? Since video. Um, you know, you have to make decisions to just spoil a movie sometimes. And that's just going to be my life now. Oh, some got spoiled for you that you didn't like? Because well, this is one you're interested in seeing. That's my whole thing is I don't make time to watch movies. And so this is how I get punished. <laughs> but you've seen is, the original, right? I've seen the original um, multiple times, but I haven't seen the live action. And I had most of the people on my feed were saying that they really enjoyed it. So I was, you know, like, oh, I could go. I, I could see myself watching that. But then I didn't take the time to watch it. So mm-hmm. I got to see like Raj, the tiger. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got to see like Iago and Sultan and I, all the characters and, uh, oh, what's bad guy's name? J- uh, Jafar. Jafar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and I hadn't seen, I hadn't, I literally had not seen any, I didn't know what Aladdin or Jasmine looked like. I had no idea. So now I like I know. the, I like the actors that they pulled for this. I, I thought I they did, did a I great will job. Say if I had, I mean, the one thing that was not doing it as well for me, the guy that played Aladdin was fine. There were moments where I felt he was a little, I don't know, bland. It might not have been his bad. Um, I did not really like Jafar that much. Uh, no, and, I, yeah, Jafar was a weak spot for me, but the two mains I, I really enjoyed. Yeah, I think that was a sin was like Jafar is a teenager or something. <laughs> well, he acts like a <clears throat> petulant but he, teenager. Yeah. He looks super young too. And, you know, the Jafar that I remember what made him so mm. creepy and maybe they purposefully avoided I think they did. this. I think they did. Is having the creepy old man, yeah. you know, want to have the, the princess, which now that I'm saying it out loud. I'm kind of glad they didn't do that. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so yeah, part of it for me was like being an Agrabah, seeing it like with my own eyes and like a real place. I was really excited to see it and a little bummed that my first experience is the super fast version. Yeah. Um, but then I found myself kind of like reading the sins going, yeah, yeah, this is dumb. I don't want to watch this. <laughs> 
Like there, there's one particular sin, I guess this can transition us into the, some of the sins that we really yeah, enjoy. Yeah, the one particular sin that I was really enjoying is those secret stairs and how there's like this rant mm-hmm. about the time that it would take to create this really yes. complex stair system. Giant, you know, logs, logs yeah. carved out of stone walls. Yeah, like, you, like, you pull a little handle lever that has to have some, The you roof know, is 11 feet off the ground. <laughs> the ladder is like, fine. <laughs> If he could do that, he should have been able just to build himself like a really nice apartment. He's right. an engineer at that point. Yes. And they're super valuable. I mean, for him to cut all of the stuff into the stone and not take like a loading, like a lodestone out and pe- walls aren't crumbling. So he obviously is super oh good gosh, at whatever he does. Right. Like he should be rich. Yeah. It's, it's funny that you you mention engineer because I had a sin that got uh, cut, I think, uh, where she says something about you're a magician. And I said, no, Jasmine, the word you're looking for is engineer. Yeah. Because <laughs> he just, you know. But that's I I it's kind of one of those things that happens is when you're watching something with like this dazzling turn your brain off the spectacle that's really cool but then when you stop and think about it that's the dumbest thing ever <laughs> right. and so I feel like had I watched that that would have been super cool sure yeah and also as a kid watching that that's just like this magical thing right but then practically it's the dumbest thing ever yeah you're yeah. like blowing my mind now though because it's kind of like like Peter Parker for instance like you know he's always like the whole thing of his whole thing is he's always poor and he's trying to scrounge together money and it's like you invented like this webbing material yeah, you should be wealthy oh my god like like i mean like who would not be able to use that for something yeah <laughs> um there were so many sins i loved on this though so do you mean just like go off on my face yeah, of course i wrote on this like, do it man <laughs> tell us how amazing tell me it is. how great i am but yes today. please <laughs> I, th- this one had several rants that I really loved. Uh, there was the Iago, Iago the Bird rant, mm-hmm. which was fantastic and got some serious love. There was a couple tweets about, you know, Iago the Bird. Uh, the rant at the end about you need to write a law and not give her a freaking ring. <laughs> loved that. Yes. Thank God for that. Um, the the sin that's just like, thanks, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a Jeremy staple. Guys, he loves but that's that. me. Yeah. I, I, that's how I feel. And so I guess, like, I think Jeremy and I are sort of in tune with the sins that we write, mm-hmm. which I'm not trying to, like, say. Yeah, Jeremy anything. watches the movies. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I just, I really like, that is something I really relate to. Mm-hmm. Like, thanks, I hate this. So mm-hmm. I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, a couple other ones was can Bell paint with the part of your world while letting it go mashup song. <laughs> yes. Really love that. And speaking of the song, when he sings the all my life, I've only wanted mm-hmm. one thing is only to be a princess and not just be some lo- lowly handmaid. Mm-hmm. I could not tell if that was from something or if he made it up. So I actually like Google searched it. Uh-huh. So congratulations, Jeremy, on writing a song. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Jonathan? Um, I love the part where you guys were talking about like I f- you should have just written you should have just used the same script. Yeah, yeah. and then it's yeah. basically like if Disney can get away with this, then I should be able to play that game too. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, um, that's fun. You can't teach situational ethics to a monkey. I thought it was really <laughs> funny, and I loved the term uh, "gender gardeners." Yes, yes, for the yeah. genie kids. Yeah, DJ I N gender gardeners. Yeah, yeah. yeah that gen. was brilliant. I guess it'd be Jen. Gen, gen, gender. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, the only thing I wanted to bring up, just because it's the thing in the movie that, for whatever reason, you just you get you ever you get. It's almost like you get something stuck in your teeth, and you just keep you just can't get it out of there. Sugar daddies. The the one thing in this movie that I just can't quit thinking about Rolos. is that when he's trying to get that lamp back, his decision is just to make Iago a giant parrot. Like you have all <laughs> the control mm-hmm. in the universe. What a dragon. Well, like could right? you just bring the lamp back? Yes, that's like, what I'm saying. There are millions of things you could do, and you're just like, no, bigger parrot. <laughs> this will work. It was so good. And you could brought up the animals, like if they were doing the live action, like why didn't they just make it a cartoon? I. I, the Iago thing was kind of annoying. Um, you guys didn't even mention Abu, who was perfectly fine. But I actually liked the tiger. Yeah. yeah. Um, I liked the way it is they, just terrifying. Yeah. I mean, it's probably not. It's probably not possible that she would be able to have a tiger like that. But OK, you you mentioned you mentioned the tiger. I have to ask, was it just me or was it not hilarious that it looked like the tiger was saying that yeah. sentence? Yeah, I, oh, that was that was also I, yeah, I was literally actually. watched that like seven times and <laughs> laughed my butt off. I was just like, <laughs> just the way it was. I, I It certainly like, wasn't intentional, they, but the tiger's you know, mouth was moving. They probably filmed that scene like 50 times. And, uh, you know, the tiger's an acting tiger. 
And, uh, he, <laughs> had right. me- he had memorized the lines. Yeah, he just pulled a Jennifer Aniston from That's Friends. Right. That's right. Mouth in the lines. <laughs> oh my God, that was like Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> it's also, um, it was interesting too to watch how many times other people had control of the lamp and didn't just change Genie over. Right. Yeah. Jasmine has the lamp in that moment. Just rub it and say, you know, I want to be Sultan. I want to be Sultan, and you're done. <laughs> Ta da. <laughs> Yeah. 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 But yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah, definitely didn't love the movie by any means, but it's it's perfectly entertaining. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fun. And I had a good time uh, with it. But the video know. was great. I'll never watch it. I'm I done. love those. I love the. I love the Jeremy really hates this video. Sometimes those are just those are nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it brought me back uh, to like Pete's Dragon, you know, vibes. <laughs> Good times. Uh, let's move on to Planet Hulk. This was a Atkinson Watkins joint. Chris and Jonathan wrote from a on long time this. ago. A long, yeah. How long has this one been um, this in the was can? Probably written over the summer. This was one of those we wrote to have basically as a backup in case yeah. we needed it. And you may have noticed the Hobbs and Shaw video was live for like five minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then we replaced it with and this I'm, one. I'm sure it will be back at some point. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you'll get to see that at some point. Um, but let's talk about Planet Hulk. Uh, I'll start and just say I had no concept that this was a thing that ever existed. Uh, it's one of those rare occurrences for me. Uh, where I'm just like, this is a thing? What is this? I don't, you know, I have no awareness well, of this. Marvel Marvel, and DC have both done this. DC maybe is more notable for it because I think, I just think their animated movie line is, is, is more uh, recognized. Uh, these mm-hmm. direct to like DVD movies, uh, direct to blue, whatever you want to call it. Um, but basically Marvel was just taking these comic book storylines and making animated movies out of them. And so you have the Planet Hulk storyline, which was, I think it was like in the aughts, maybe like the early, like somewhere in the two thousands is when the storyline was going on. And well, we might even, Oh, we even say that in the video. Yeah. 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 And what's, what blew my mind was I'd never heard it. I'm not a comic fan, so mm-hmm. I didn't know it was in the comics. I didn't know there was the, not only in the comics, but an animated movie made out about it. And it's basically the Hulk storyline from Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> Yeah, so like, Thor Ragnarok is in there very and, heavily like, borrows from Planet Hulk and yeah. just kind of inserts Thulk. Kind of Thulk. I just created a character uh, <laughs> combined Thor and Hulk. Kind of, kind of puts Thor in there. Now, Thor Ragnarok is also, I believe, like that's a storyline too. And they just kind of combine the two because, and there's a lot of rights issues there. Why we would never probably get a live action Planet Hulk movie, um, which Marvel doesn't. Marvel can't do standalone Hulk movies, but they can do yeah ones where he's with other characters. So that's how they were able to do this. And it's actually it's a really fun comic series. It went on for like a couple years. And had you um, seen it before you send it? No, I had not. I had read the comic series, but I had no, I had read I had read the storyline in the comic when it came out. And Danae, I'm assuming you've never seen, but I had never seen, seen this movie. movie. No, I'm with you. I had no idea that it existed. Okay, so Jonathan, you're the only one of the three of us that's actually seen the whole thing. <laughs> so, like, is it? I mean, um, it, to me, it looked like it was pretty. Um, it, it, it's be- pretty. It's pretty. It's fine. It, it. I mean, if you like. Like it's a perfectly fine adaptation. Uh, I mean, the animation is not particularly great. Um, it's very. Um, I mean, it's okay, but it's it's very stagnant. It, like the it just doesn't have a lot of motion to it. Yeah. I guess it it almost yeah. feels like um, those live action comic books. I I don't I've never really done much with those, but I know they exist. Uh, where you can kind of like watch a comic book play out on a computer screen. Yeah, yeah. It, it felt like it was a bit above that, but not. It felt. It felt not to me too like too much a, above that. It just felt to me like what I would always say is like a you know straight to video kind of movie. Yeah, you know, it's where very just much in that vein. Kind of cheap. Kind of doesn't feel like it. You know, they went all out for it. Doesn't mean it's horrible, yeah, but it probably it, just feels. It's very much in the same vein as that. We did that Justice League Dark movie. Yes. Um, yeah. It, it's very much in the same vein as that. Yeah. Well, let's talk uh, about the uh, the video itself then, yeah. since none of us, uh, other than Jonathan, have really seen it. Danae, did you have anything from the the video you wanted to mm-hmm. chat about? Yeah, who's got the twenty one pilot rant? <laughs> uh, that would be Chris. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. It, was it is great. funny. It's a, it's it's kind of like one of those things where you wonder if it's just it's in someone's psyche and they just they're looking for an outlet yeah, for it, sure. and it's like okay, here it is. Well, I'm doing it right now. And I might have even asked him at the time, but yeah, it almost felt like he had been to a concert. And, yeah, yeah, and that, for and sure. that happened. But I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. I, well, I and even if he hadn't, he's certainly indicating that the narrator has. You yeah, know, very like much so. And it was, yeah, yeah, it was excellent. I love, I love. Chris is really, really good with rants like that. Yeah, yes, that, 
That's uh, fun. Yeah. Uh, I, I, when I was watching the, um, watching the video, trying to do what we do, you know, kind of piece together the, lar- the larger picture. And I, I just, I realized that Hulk is not one of those car- uh, those characters in, in, um, comics or, or movies that I'm really drawn to. Mm-hmm. You, you know how we all kind of have our faves. We're sort of drawn to like Aaron for you. I think it's Captain America. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm me, Spider-Man. It's, it's Captain America's butt for me <laughs> just kidding um I, I didn't say it wasn't captain america's butt for me either today <laughs> um there's just certain you know characters that we're drawn to and f- you know for me my uh, for positive or negative my larger exposure to any of the comic world is coming from this incredible run of marvel movies mm-hmm. where they've just opened up this portal to wanting to learn more about characters and so from that exposure if if there's if there's a character that I want to learn more about, it hasn't been Hulk. And I don't know why that is. I think I do like Mark Ruffalo's. um, I like how he plays the character Mm -hmm. a lot, but I like Mark Ruffalo a lot. He's, you know, uh, of the male actors, he's just one of those ones that I've always really liked how sure. he, uh, there's like a love movie that he was in once that's something to do with gardens on a rooftop. I don't remember anything about it, but that <laughs> I just remember really liking his character in yeah. it. I like his, you like his butt. Great butt. Yeah, yeah. That's really important for me, people. Like, <laughs> I feel like and, roughly he should have like with that last name, he's got to have like his fan. You could really come up with a fun name for the fan base, but I'm trying, I can't, I can't. The, the ruffians. Or the yeah. ruffalovians. Yeah. There's all kinds of options out there. Anyhow. So, so, but I have haven't been so compelled by what I'm seeing. I, I like the the big Hulk moments for me is the the hilarious moment in Avengers. I think it was Avengers whenever he takes Loki and like whacks him around mm-hmm. like a rag doll. Puny God. Or is it Ragnarok whenever he falls down and kind of plinks on the rainbow bridge? Yeah. The plink 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 plink. Yeah, that's like, Ragnarok. Yeah. Those are those are hilarious moments and 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 not necessarily expected. But it's hard because he's just this. Mo- he's just this you know killing machine monster that can't be destroyed and um i think that whenever they've shown his humanity or whatever in the marvel world i've appreciated that you know that he has some kind of a struggle and i can i can appreciate that but i've never really dug into his backstory like i have with others uh so for me to watch this and go oh yeah there's this whole other part of this character who has all these other storylines that i don't even know anything about and there's like two thors uh, it's just a reminder that there's so much comic content mm-hmm. that if you want to dig in, to me the animation doesn't bother me at all. But I don't, I don't mind, you know. Uh, no, it's it's perfectly I, fine. It I'm just feels more like I guess like animation. a TV show. That might yeah. be the best way to put it. Well, you know, it's it's expensive to animate. It exactly. takes so much time, whether it's computer or you know, and this is obviously hand drawn, um, right? Like that's how I at least when I'm, yeah, I'm I looking at so, it. It's usually yeah. a combination these days, but yeah. Um, so I can appreciate, I, I like hand drawn. I think that that's, mm-hmm. it's super, super appreciated that somebody has the, the constitution to just sit there and like draw panel after panel after panel for a cartoon, like go from comic where you're drawing a comic mm-hmm. panel by panel. Yeah, but then I'm like, probably oh. disservicing it a little bit by comparing no, it to no. a motion no, capture I, I, comic book. But what I, I just felt like, it just felt like a very straight adaptation. Like that's kind of what they were doing. Like, it, Let's right. just take this cell mm-hmm. and put it in this movie. It did pique my curiosity a little bit in that I love stories. And when I saw that a Hulk was going <laughs> to kiss stories. someone, I was like, oh, he's going to fall in love. Did he fall in love? And is is this like his planet? And, you know, so there's I had yeah. like a little intrigue there from that. And I also I don't know why I really liked Meek and I wanted to hear Meek's story. And so I love the sins about like, are we going to let this guy talk? And Oh, yeah, that was ridiculous. Like, yeah. So I, I don't know. I had a good time. I actually had a good time watching this one. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. I, I really liked the uh, paper, rock, scissors joke. I thought yeah. that was really clever. Um, yeah. I uh, I like the uh, the Hulk, the new meaning of Hulk smash. Uh, I thought was a really clever yeah. turn. Uh, I like in the comments that uh, people were playing on that. Did you see some of those? No. Uh, like Hulk at the beach is Hulk splash. Uh, you know, uh, Hulk uh, doing heroin is Hulk stash. Oh my gosh. Uh, Hulk with diarrhea is Hulk dash. Uh, <laughs> that kind of stuff was fun. Oh, you guys are hilarious. Um, yeah, I had a really good time with it. I also liked the outtakes. I was waiting just yeah. with bated breath for the Korg uh, outtake with yeah. the, you know, yeah, the that was Korg voice. Um, yeah. Well, and you were talking about animated uh, stuff helping you without, like, it really just kind of sets itself up for outtakes. So, yeah, the outtakes were so much fun to work on with this one because I did the Tales from the Crypt when I put that one in. Yeah. 
because you know Meek sounded just like the Crypt Keeper. Yeah, that was good. And then the Throw Mama from the Train worked out really well. And oh, and the Fast and the Furious one was my favorite. But um, there's some yeah, good ones for sure. The uh, the you thought this was going to be a street fight? Yeah. <laughs> my favorite one was the Bog of Eternal Stench, of course. I yeah. loved that oh, one. Thank you. Yeah, I think I put that one. I don't know. That might have been made. But either way, that worked out really well. There was a couple also the uh, the darkest episode of BoJack Horseman. Mm-hmm. I thought was funny because he yeah, did look like a horse head. On that too, yeah, you, you did. Seen season four? I yeah, like yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. Um, and then uh, there was one scene that I thought was really really funny. The we Cronin. It was when the when there was they're doing like the backstory, the Cronin mm-hmm. backstory, and yeah. so he's like, "We Cronins are the destroyer of worlds." And then Jeremy pipes in and is like, "We can usually get the job done with three guys in a tiny ass ship." <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I that just, was awesome. Uh, those are the kinds of ones where I'm like like man these sins are so clever like they're just it's so fun because there's so many different ways to just like interject yeah you're sending one tiny ship to an entire planet and anyway anything else you wanted to mention jonathan from uh, the video i just want the asbestos lady is a legit creation by marvel i want to say that that exists (laughs) wow (laughs) that's already the iron man could have just as easily been the asbestos lady and just the if if you've never read up on marvel in like the 90s it is fascinating um yeah it's a it, it it's it's amazing that the MCU exists in the sense that they've been able to make these movies, but it's amazing that it, it literally exists because they 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 sold off so much of their property to so many different people, and it, it's just it's fascinating if you ever read anything about it. Um, they just put bot on the end of everything. I like that we pointed that out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and then the only um, I loved the line. I don't know why, but where the fuck did they get the burial wrap from? Was killing me. Yeah. Uh, and then who's going to tell a rock to shut up? Not Vin Diesel, that's for sure. And then we got a Digstown reference in there. Um, gotta love the Digstown references. Oh my god! I just if I can ever get one one person like every few days to watch that movie, I'd be a happy man. I love Digstown. that movie so much. It's great. It's great. <laughs> you should yeah, watch Digstown, Danae. That should be. <laughs> you would. Is love that it. your new goal now? Is to get me to watch it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Watch Digstown. Uh. Well, there you go. There is the week in sinning. Uh. For last week um we had a good time writing them producing them hopefully you had a good time watching them we ready to head on to keeping tabs let's do it sure. all right the internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about movies and share pornography with one another ha ha no jeez this is the most public yet of my many humiliations we're gonna talk keeping tabs the stuff that we looked up while we were sending stuff this week and also keeping tabs is the second most to loved segment on our <laughs> podcast i know that because of survey yay <laughs> go do the survey cinemasins.com slash bts yay. <laughs> yay. all right uh let's each pull a funny story from uh the behind the sins uh content for the week um what do you got today oh guys so uh i didn't do anything this week i didn't write on anything technically i wrote last week mm-hmm. for um uh Charlie's Angels, and mm-hmm. I did some research on Charlie's Angels. So I can either tell you what I researched for that one sure, or just yeah. skip this week. No, no, no. Go ahead. Tell us the Charlie's Angels stuff. I can tell you confidently that I, I actually decided not. Uh, there's two that I just didn't. They didn't make the cut. So maybe I'll do that this week instead of the research. Okay. So uh, cut was that um, I, and there's this moment where Dylan, she is naked. She falls down. She rolls down a, a hill and, mm-hmm. and she lands in some house and she walks over to the door uh holding like some sort of pool animal and there's some kids playing some video games and she asks them for help and then the next scene we see her on a tiny bike or something like a, a moped i don't even I think remember she's riding a wrecking ball in the next scene oh yes yeah, yes no. but she's wearing the clothing that the kids wore mm-hmm. and f- so first of all you're in a house that probably has parents and so there's got to be clothes that are for adults but this movie makes you think that one of the adolescent children took his clothes off and gave them to Dylan to right, wear. Right. And also when Dylan is wearing them, they're supersized on her like kid like big shorts, a big oversized WWE wrestling shirt, big shoes. But that is not how that works. And I wrote a whole scene about it and it was cut. And I, <laughs> I saw that it was in some of the comments like we're not going to talk about her. And I'm like, we will. <laughs> you just listen we to the will. podcast. We listen to the podcast and I'll go on a rant about it. But that really bothered me. That whole like interaction just 
Well, it's quite possible since you don't see what happens that she like pinned him down and stripped them. You know, like it's okay, you, dark man. Yeah, you can go to the worst worst case scenario here. But why? <laughs> There's clearly a lot cut out of that movie, though. That movie feels like like it's wonky. There's like a, two hours on the cutting room floor. I could be yeah. wrong, but that's just what yeah. it feels like when you're watching it. Mm-hmm. That's so that was one movie. of mine. Nice. Do you mean do both of mine now? No, or? Okay. no you're good. Jonathan, okay. what do you got? Um, I'll talk about the, um, when we did Black Mirror, I had a sin in there. Well, I had a kind of a jokey sin in there about the, the there's a comment about cornflakes. And I ended up going with just like, you know, grape nuts was on the table or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, right, uh, yeah. but, but in that, but throughout that, which I was just telling Danae about how I do this a lot, where I'll do research on stuff and then end up just going with what I thought of in the first place that I never would have had to have done research on. Um, but I looked up all these weird cereals and um, I didn't really, I, I couldn't, I couldn't find anything I had done for uh, Planet Hulk. So I guess I will just talk about that because so you, you uh, looked up a, you looked up a list of strange cereals. There's been a lot of weird because I thought maybe I could use this in a sin and then it just oh, oh yeah the, just... the bootios did you look up bootios <laughs> no there's bootios okay so bootios are from a wrestler my, okay a backstory super fast promise won't take long my husband's a wwe wrestling fan and so baby got mm-hmm. backstory so there's these two rest no, it's not two there's a group of wrestlers i can't remember their name because i'm not the wwe fan but they're just goofy and they play a trumpet it's weird and they have a cereal called bootios and they actually make the cereal. And I was going to get them for Justin once. And they're like ridiculously expensive to buy on Amazon. Like yeah, it is probably like a collector's. Yeah. It's item. not something that you buy and you eat like at the grocery store. So they probably don't count for your research. But anyway. Bootios. No, that's like uh, that's like the year the Cubs won the World Series. They made a uh, they made a cereal called Rizzo's. And um, somebody got me. I think Barrett actually got me a box of those. And they've never been open. They're just they're they're on my they're in my pantry as a collector collector's item. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so there's been a lot of weird cereals and weird tie-ins and all kinds of stuff. But um, there was a Kentucky Fried cereal from just just oh. a few years ago. Mm. No, there not, was mm. there was yeah, one that use, I just thought this was instead of uh, instead oh. of milk, you use gravy. No. Yes, exactly. It's like you use crystal gravy from yeah. Saturday Night Live. Um, crunchy Logs, which I'm assuming that went away <laughs> because that name is disgusting. <laughs> Uh, if I eat too much corn, I have crunchy logs. There but, you go. Uh, Thanks, Aaron. Um, <laughs> Thank you for I think, that. I, th- I think we. I think that's true for all of us. <laughs> um, what did I watch recently? Where they said something about we can't digest corn. Oh, it was, it Saturday, was Night uh, Live. Saturday Night Live. Yeah. We actually talked about that here on the show, too, because I did, I did a yeah. sin about that. Well, that was what was interesting, because it was on Saturday Night Live, and I was like, oh, my God, there, we had a sin about how you can't digest corn or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was funny. In, just, fellow, in, huh? in, case, in case you didn't see it, uh, the SNL skit is basically the first Thanksgiving, yeah. uh, but the uh, Native Americans are uh, making fun of the pale face. And eventually they are all united by the fact that they don't digest corn. That's yes. the, the human element that eventually brings them all together. Yeah, corn, <laughs> corn defeated racism. That's right. Um, and then just a couple other ones, though. There was a Robin Hood Prince of Thieves tie-in cereal, which unfortunately Ooh. did not have like uh, Kevin Costner marshmallows. It was like bows and arrows and stuff. But uh, Nice. Uh, Urkelos, that was a pretty uh, popular cereal for like a month. Did I eat that? Yeah, oh, exactly. No. <laughs> and then there was a nerd cereal where apparently I don't remember this, but apparently it was like it was like the nerds boxes where they were divided. Yeah. into two Isn't different flavors. Isn't that basically flavors. Fruity Pebbles? Isn't huh? Fruity Pebbles? Isn't Fruity Pebbles basically nerd cereal? I would think so. Yeah, but mm. these were like uh, these. I don't know. These were like more like uh, like circle puffs. They were more like they were like corn puffs, but like with flavor. Apparently, mm. yeah. I so, love Fruity anyways, Pebbles. That was it's the my, best. That was my venture down cereal title. Nice. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, I did some research uh, for the Aladdin script on domesticated tigers uh, nice. because I wrote us in about uh, the tiger mm-hmm. probably would be eating Jasmine rather than being her pet. And it is true. People have tried to domesticate tigers and yep. it doesn't ever turn out well. No. Um, they have that. I don't know if you've heard about this. They have this instinct to hunt you. <laughs> Have you ever been hunted like at the like at the zoo, like through the like, have you ever been to the you zoo? You know, this is one of my triggers, right? Oh, yeah. This sorry. Is, yeah. Sorry. Being hunted is a trigger sorry, for me. Yeah. But have you? Oh, God. 
are you talking about like they're just like like watching you can from... tell yeah oh, you can tell no, through the glass think that, they, that. that they're that sizing you up mm-hmm. yeah i i've had that happen before and it is is it because you're meaty i'm pretty meaty I'm, like, I'm a pretty mm, meaty guy look at that steak. yeah that's a big that's a big steak there they're was a person nope. when I was a kid in the Nashville area, I actually did not live too far from my grandmother at the t- where she lived at the time, um, that uh, had a panther. Oh. And uh, yeah, How is that legal? Eaten. That can't be legal. Did you did you finish that story by saying she got eaten? No, he no, not my grandmother. No, the guy that oh. had a panther. I'm just saying it wasn't that far from where my grandmother lived, which no, is but, why it's always stuck. But, with no, I need to I Jonathan, I need you to to, to clarify the person who owned the panther got eaten by their panther they yeah they got killed i don't know if they got <gasps> fully digested yes this is what i'm saying yeah no i mean there's a lot of stories out there like that yeah let's not google that this is not a good keeping task <laughs> let's not dig deeper because, into I mean, this eventually, one well, really? eventually they'll turn you and, and sometimes like with the siegfried and roy thing for instance like the the theory they have is that uh because i don't remember which one it was we might have even talked about this on a podcast but whichever one it was that got attacked by the tiger yeah they have tigers, right? Yes. Yep. Um, the theory of the other one is that because he had a he fell down or he got he had a he had stroke or something um, that the tiger was actually trying to protect him. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, that's what I've heard. And so when yeah. he bit, but 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 like but tigers when they protect their cubs, they bite down and pull them away. And so yeah. of course when he bit down, he obviously you know bit down. Well, there's a, there's something similar about how dogs correct other dogs is they kind of mm-hmm. nip at their muzzle, and so if they're trying to correct a small person like a kid. Yeah. Oftentimes it's not that they're being attacked, it's that they're trying to correct and so and they bite the muzzle, which is our face. Um so yeah. yeah. Animals are dangerous. <laughs> yeah, they are. <sighs> you shouldn't you should never uh you should never keep uh keep tigers in your in mm-hmm. your home. Nope. Keep keeping tabbies. Keeping so what did tabbies. You, what did you, is that just what you learned that they will eat you? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Lots of stories like your uh, your guy that you talked about, and uh, it's not a great uh, deep dive on Google. Just just so you know, Danae never especially never do for that Danae. Deep dive. <laughs> yeah, won't do that. Okay, thanks for the warning. <laughs> you're you're very very welcome. You said you had another one you wanted to to talk about. Yeah, there was a moment um, when you slow down the fight scene between Dylan and all the guys. She's tied to that chair for a mm-hmm. brief moment mm-hmm. or whatever. And uh, there's a second when she breaks out of the chair and like her legs get loose. But when you slow it down, her legs are not ever actually tied to the chair. Ah. They just have like you know the uh, rope wrapped around her legs, kind of in this uh-huh. cool fashion yeah. where it looks like it was. So, so when she smashes it, it's not nearly as exciting. And so I had a whole scene about that that was cut but i just thought that was interesting it's kind of fun to is that the spread eagle moment yes yeah mm-hmm. yeah very memorable that moment yeah i why? don't know why it's weird, I didn't, it's weird but i have <laughs> no idea why uh well there you go there's our keeping tabs for the week uh you guys ready to move on to the comment section sounds good I, know what you're I appreciate your honesty you're a real straight shooter you are the ones who are the ball lickers. We're each going to pick a... Comment section is currently in last place. <laughs> so should we skip it? No. It's funny because in the survey, I asked like, to rank the segments. Uh-huh. And then the very next question is, what do you want to hear less of? And most of the comments, most of the people that are commenting is, how dare you make me rank them? <laughs> I didn't even enjoy ranking them. And now you're asking me if there's one I want you to stop. I love them all. So. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, I'm. it's unfortunate that that's the case because we already legally are obligated to drop whatever one comes in last place. So yeah, sorry about it, looks that, guys. Like, it looks like we'll never be doing the comment section again. So uh, this is the last episode. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> we'll take your comments anytime. Uh, we're just going to pick a comment or two from the week's videos. Uh, I wanted to mention one from Rick and Morty, uh, because there's a sin about, uh, this towing company, this movie, move, moving company. And, uh, I did a sin where basically I praised the, all the puns and the wordplay and the jokes and then said, but the sin is toes don't bend like that. Well, apparently, uh, people's toes do bend like that, or at least they're pretending like they do. Uh, Chase says, I would like to point out that my weird ass toes do in fact bend like that. Uh, and I just say, maybe see a doctor. Like, <laughs> have you, 
<laughs> have you seen those toes? It's like it's like he they can, can you grip things? They, yeah, they, it's like they can bend their toes down as if like making a fist and then point their big toe out at How the do same you, time. You can't, you can't do that. I get that your toes have two places to bend, but they don't. It, those toes are bent at the second knuckle all the way over. That's um, not possible. Uh, one day ago, so this so today is so on Sunday uh-huh. on Sunday, J Doggy Dizzle said my toes bend like that. No, so there's at least liars, liars. <laughs> I want receipts. Liars, all of them. I don't get it. <laughs> Show me pictures. <laughs> Send me pictures of your freaky toes. Oh no! Where are they sending <laughs> I don't pictures? See those. Are they tweeting at you? Or are they S- send pictures? them to behind the sins pod at gmail dot com. <laughs> Show me your freaky toes. No. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I do not believe you. I'm not kidding. Uh, Feel free. Oh no. Uh, what about you guys today? What do you got? Um, I had one from Anatomy Park. Uh, that was from Booza Boozak. Boozak says, um, I moved my mirror from the bottom of my stairs after watching this video. <laughs> Am I wrong? That is a silly place to have a mirror, isn't it? I don't think that it, I think it bothers you, but I just think it's funny that somebody went around their house and potentially, like, I, let's just say that they actually did this, rearranged their home after being judged by one of our. Wait, what was the sin again? <laughs> they have, in Rick and Morty's home, they have a mirror at the bottom of the stairs. There's oh, barely yeah, any room yeah. to stand there. You're blocking the stairs if you're looking in the mirror and if you're walking down the stairs you're just seeing your legs Um, like i don't i don't understand this i had one in one of my homes growing up we had one like right at the top of the stairs for some well that's a little different but you know it's still kind of in the way creepy sometimes especially if you're like half asleep walking up the stairs you're like oh my god what is that (laughs) so when did you become like an interior design expert when i signed up for this job where i'm trying to find mistakes in rick and morty episodes it's hard work well this poor person rearranged their home because of <laughs> good you. for them <laughs> it's not the place for a mirror uh what about you did you have a comment that you liked um i did i believe mine from anatomy park but um yes it was and it said so it was jeff bosco and it said so not even a word about how rick knows certain details about annie's vaginal geography um yeah there's some places we just don't go i'm sorry <laughs> um, yeah i'm okay i'm okay we didn't go. it's a weird i will tell you this it is a weird joke in in that uh episode no, it and is for sure. it's i it's it's almost like for a show that that does uh, we've talked about being rated r and going over the line it was almost even over another line yeah in, in a weird way i was just like but that was just i don't know it was it was yeah so we decided not to to touch on that at yeah, all no i mean and honestly obviously we 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 don't really i mean we will go weird places but uh yeah i thought i i agree with you on that really weird. yeah um, my other one, I have another one. Or did you have another one? No, I'm good. Uh, the other one is from the pilot for Rick and Morty. This is from Pickle J. Ho. Pickle J. Ho says, uh, apparently Adult Swim, because, oh, the, the sin is about how much he says Morty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, okay, I also, I guess I should say before I start reading this, this is according to somebody. I don't, I didn't do my own research to oh, back okay. this up. Yeah. Uh, apparently Adult Swim complained that Rick said Morty too much in the first draft that they were sent. So Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon decided to make him say it a whole lot more <laughs> just to spite them for gas. Well, Personally, I think the repetition combined with the ridiculous situations made it progressively funnier the more he said it. Yeah. What were you going to say? I was just going to say that's funny that that's what they commented on. Not the fact that like Rip Rick's like uh, like belching up like stomach acid and stuff but <laughs> yeah. that he was saying morty too many times sounds like a studio note to me oh, that's anecdotal as it may be yeah. sounds like it could be true somebody's always got opinions but so. i i like that this that, that pickle joe apparently knew like some serious fun uh facts yeah about the show that, that makes me fun. happy uh we ready to move on to the question for the week yep uh, this comes to us from Marcus. It says, good morning, B team. Uh, after watching a recap of the latest Watchmen episode, it was brought to my attention that the name of Sister Knight's business is Milk in Hanoi Bakery with the slogan, let Saigons be Saigons, <laughs> which I think we can all agree is hilarious uh, in a great pun. It also got me thinking of other fictional businesses from TV and movies with fantastic names. While I will always love Quentin Tarantino's Big Kahuna Burger and Kevin Smith's movies, uh, Milk and Hanoi is the only one that can can com- 
compete with my favorite, the Meat Cute Butchery from iZombie. That is a great pun store name as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you all think of other fictional businesses with names better than these? Keep up the great work. Cheers, Marcus. Uh, Danae, what about you? Nope. (laughs) <laughs> um, we did this last week. I uh, apparently had a whole extra week to try to figure out one mm-hmm. that's fictional. Yeah. And I can still only come up with real ones. So I'm going to go with what I said last week because it made me think of a local bait and tackle store called Masturbators. <laughs> There's a huge sign for it. People go to take pictures beside it. You know, it's it's yeah. one of those kind of places. And I know that that's probably multiple places. Right down the road. They know what they're doing. Right and, down the road no, we have. No, don't take it. What? I, if you're going to say come and go, no. I was already going to say that one too. I, I wasn't. Oh, okay. But it, but it is very popular around here, the gas station come and go, and people who, who come here- Are not here, from here. They're like, they're like what? what? is that gas station? Literally a gas station called come and go with a K. Mm-hmm. Apparently that meant, in their staff meeting, their board meeting or whatever, they're like, well, yeah. we still want to use this word. Let's just make it a K. Well, you could spell it C O M E and just be, you know, just be, and, and just be fine. K U M, K U M, man, mm-hmm. that's just that's just a weird it would spelling. Not, it wouldn't shock me if you found out like a couple of like former like frat guys own that place. I don't know, We're but just I like, was hey, s- man, what was your favorite part of college? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, I was going to say just down the road we have uh, Uranus Fudge Factory. Oh yes, so yeah, and, we do, and that's uh, you know, welcome to the Ozarks, in Mississippi. <laughs> It's it, Mississippi. Or Missouri, Missouri, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in Mississippi. But here in Missouri, we have Uranus Fudge Factory. I did go to uh, Google to find out other funny business names. Yeah. That was really fun for me. But again, I did that just for real ones. Uh, and one of the other ones I remember seeing a, a joke about is like a hair, a hair place that was curl up and die. Yeah, that's and a it, great one. People who do that for their real business names, it's not just, you know, in fictional world, that it's their true business name i just find that to be fantastic yeah so yeah there's a dog grooming place just down the road called uh, doggy styles mm-hmm. so yeah. beaver cleaners <laughs> that's another one yeah yep. anyway uh jonathan what about you i don't know these are not better but um in uh halloween three season of the witch the uh the, <laughs> the company that makes the masks is called silver shamrock okay and I have always loved that. That 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 has been a uh, that was my fantasy football team a couple years ago. Actually, I called them Silver Shamrock. Nice. And so clearly that has stuck with me. And there's even like a, if you YouTube that, it's awesome because I know Danae has not seen this movie, and I'm sure Aaron hasn't either. But there's a commercial that plays throughout the film, um, and it is it is just it's so annoyingly catchy. Like uh, like, and I love when I love when movies do stuff like that where. They basically just create like this entire company and give them like logos and theme songs yeah. and yeah, it's fun. All that kind of fun stuff. The only other one I could think of was from Beverly Hills 90210, the the Peach Pit. That was the name of the place. They always they always hung out. Right. Yeah. Um, because I grew up with sisters that loved that show, and I guess I kind of got forced into liking it. Um, so yeah, I always thought that was a clever name for a diner. Danae, you obviously saw something hilarious. I'm sorry. There. I oh, apologize. I thought you were just laughing at me saying Halloween three season to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I just I should have I should have stopped scrolling. Is it is a Christian center called Ram in the Bush? <laughs> that, Good really funny. <laughs> that is awesome. I know. <laughs> it got me. It got you, Aaron. No, that is amazing. Well- well, Especially because you led that off with a Christian sound. Right. Like there's there's one of two <laughs> options here. Either they are supremely aware or supremely oblivious. Totally I'm oblivious. gonna think it's the latter. They're totally oblivious. There's yeah. no way that they they haven't even been on the internet before. <laughs> like they don't know. <laughs> there, there is no way. I mean, I'm sure like the kids know, but like there's there's oh. no way that they created. Wow. Uh, well, I was going to go to, am going to go to The Simpsons. Uh, I think they have the best uh, pun business names. Uh, they're always so great at this. Uh, for instance, um, they had a, uh, a Red Lobster uh, restaurant takeoff called Dead Lobster, which I, I thought was hilarious. <laughs> uh, instead of the International House of Pancakes, they had the Municipal House of Pancakes, which I think is really funny. Uh, they had a glasses shop called I Caramba, uh, E-Y-E. Nice. Uh, a a drug star called Oedipus Rx, a mom and son pharmacy, which I oh. think is really funny. Wow! And then the best one uh, is a gun store, a gun store called Bloodbath and Beyond Gun Shop. Uh, <laughs> that is so perfect. 
<laughs> I love the Simpsons. I think their Simpsons writers are amazing. genius. Uh, so I wanted to mention those. Thank you, Marcus. For the question, question. that is a lot of fun. Uh, If you've got a question you want to send to us, could be about anything, just let us know. Uh, Hit us up at uh, behindthescenespod at gmail.com, maybe when you're uh, sending Mm -hmm. your It could uh, be a question about rams and bushes. It could be. It could be. Absolutely. We'll do our best to answer. Absolutely. Uh, All right, let's move on to Beyond the Sins. To infinity and beyond. Somewhere beyond my wild history. To boldly go where no man has gone before. All right, what's something else in the world of pop culture that you've seen recently, Jonathan? Let's kick it off with you. You know, I'm I've got a mini pod with Chris coming out later this week, but um, I just want to talk about this on as many forums as I can. Man, I saw a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and I just love that movie so it's much. It's so good. Yeah, and I don't. It's a really interesting movie because it it's one of those things where going in, I just. I don't know. It, it's hard not to be cynical going into that movie, especially in today's world. But uh, this, you shouldn't be. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> this, I mean, this movie hits all the, I mean, it hits all the good places. I, I don't even know how else to, it's It's just, it's so good. You have to see this movie. Well, it's interesting. We were talking about it on Sif Pop as well, um, my movie review podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is one of those movies that is just... Uh, it is working on such a uh, um, a deep emotional level, you know, mm-hmm. and I think you can understand that when, you know, you think about Mr. Rogers and kind of what he's meant to so many people growing up and those kind of things. But what's interesting is Mr. Rogers isn't really the center of the story. It's exactly. really a story about a, a, a journalist yeah. who has a, an encounter with Mr. Rogers. And if if you think this is, you know, just because we had the documentary last year, if you think it's just another look at his life, it's not that at all. It's, no, it's, it's not. He, um, he is kind of almost the, um, he's the location. Mr. Rogers is more the setting um, and the story is, is really about this journalist and it's a beautiful story. I think Matthew Reese, uh, is doing great work. Oh, Tom, yeah. H- Tom excellent. Hanks is mind blowing in this movie. Like he's not doing an impersonation of Mr. Rogers, exactly. but he is Mr. Rogers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I, I agree. No, I, I think, I mean, Hanks and Hanks will probably get some Oscar attention and he should. Um, I hope so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. You're, you nailed it. Like he doesn't, it, it, at the beginning, it kind of feels a bit imitative just because they start off with the show itself. But just a couple minutes in, you realize like he's he's giving a performance. And it's like it's one of those things, too, where it's it's got to be a really difficult performance because he is at the same level the entire movie. Like, yeah. you know, you know what I'm saying? Like he yeah. never he never goes up or down. Like, yeah, it's great. He is just. You know, across the board, he's given the same uh, mannerisms, you know, emoting the same. It's just I, I don't I don't know how he did it. There's, uh, it's it's beautiful. There's there's a subway scene that I that I cried oh, at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a conversation uh, that I teared up during. Um, there's another just a simple moment where Mr. Rogers wife says something to the journalist and it really moved me. Um, it's the he he says something about being married to a saint. It's that that conversation mm-hmm. and oh, that, yeah, just, we we talk about that in the mini pod a lot. Yeah, that's that's an amazing scene. Um, well, it's it's just so perfect. It's just yeah. it's just such a great thought and and so important for us to hear and not relieve ourselves from the responsibility. Well, and I, I've never once thought about the impact of calling somebody like a saint right. until I saw that scene. Yeah, and I'm like, oh no, I totally get that. Like, yeah, you know. So um, it's just it's just full of those great uh, great things. I'm glad you brought it up because yeah, it's definitely it, um, one worth watching. Yeah, it, it finds like it's one of those things where you could definitely see it being really schmaltzy or you could see it being really cynical. And it somehow finds that middle ground and just yeah. just nails it. And um, I tweeted the night after I saw it, like I was like, I didn't realize I needed this movie in my life. Um, it's one of those movies that I mean, this sounds cheesy, but it's one of those movies that makes me realize why i like to go see movies yeah um no i think that's good um and it's also one of those things where this is more personal for me but like uh just i'm not getting into details but my my family in general has been hit with a pretty hard blow recently and um it was just weird timing that i happened to see that movie that night after getting some news about something and it got me through the night basically if that makes sense sure 
Sure. Um, it's really, it's really nice to know. I mean, if you talk about like why people love movies so much, that's definitely a, a big reason. Um, yeah. when well, stuff man, like that Man, you shouldn't have happens. said that. Cause I was going to make a joke about how like, Oh, it sounds like a movie I'm going to avoid. Cause I don't like emotion. <laughs> and then you're all like being super perfect. genuine. <laughs> I think that's perfect. <laughs> no, it's really Anything good. What it you... makes me laugh right now. I'm good with. So thank okay, you. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, Danae, what do you got? Um, I I tweeted about that I wanted my Beyond the Sins to be the video of Toad singing Chandelier. <laughs> um, and I do I do stand behind that. I do recommend that you take time. To watch Toad singing Chandelier yeah. because it's just one of the most ridiculous, beautiful things. Oh, I but did not I'm, know about this. Um, but I um, just learned about um, I just learned about why is James crying. So um, I'm really excited to. Catch. I haven't I haven't learned this. That's, yet. My boys were playing that years ago. I know that's what I'm saying. That's from like 2013. Although it's yeah. still very well known. Apparently, it still gets played. It's completely. it's just a silly thing some kids did like a silly song right you're talking about it, yeah, why, is why is james crying, crying? cuz he just yeah. got dunked on cuz he just got dunked on yeah i just learned about that and it's just it silliness is, it is oh, okay. so dumb well it so is, is so uh, funny. so is toad singing chandelier yeah, yeah. and yet it, 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 you know watching that one kind of reminded me of the day that i found uh, th- that parody video of the guy dubbing over the story of my life Oh, that's so good. That's one of my favorites. Which, mm-hmm. um, well, who's the original band? Well, uh, One Direction's one story Direction. of my life, yeah. Okay, so I had never heard One Direction, and I had never heard Story of My Life before. Uh-huh. And so I clicked on this video, and it's a parody video. Well, it's not, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a, a dubbing. It's a dubbing, yeah. yeah. Somebody dubs over them singing it with their own hilarious version of the vocals. Oh, it's perfect. Um. And I, I laughed so hard. I think we both cried yeah. watching that video. So, so Toad singing Chandelier is similar to that, but I would say that the One Direction story of my life is, is even better. That's not what I'm going to talk about, though. That's great. Those are all great recommendations, though. Why um, is James crying? Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. So those are really good, funny ones. But I, I talked about this in the Forever Lost Files last week, and I really wanted to bring this up again. My Beyond the Sense is another YouTube channel uh, called The Blind Critic. Um, hey, mm-hmm. Jonathan, did you have a chance to go check him out? Because I know we I, talked about it last I, week. I, no, I, I will do that this week. No, I unfortunately did. Okay. No, it's not. No worries at all. I just know that you had said that no, you're, you're kind of. You're disappointed in me today. It's fine. <laughs> I'm no, I'm definitely going to check that out. No, that sounds really interesting. Yeah, he his name is Tommy Edison. Um, I actually found him through his other YouTube channel called uh, the Tommy Edison Experience. I want to say I had it up last. That's his week. more popular channel. He's mm-hmm. he's more known now for his yeah just kind of life vlogging than he is for his movie reviews. Um, his channel called blind film critic has 40,000 subscribers and it's, it, you know, he has a background in radio and communication and, and such. Uh, but what I love about him, and this is why I, uh, the other channel that I watch is, yes, it's called the Tommy Edison experience. T O M M Y E D I S O N. You probably can find him pretty quick on the search. That one has 702 thousand subscribers he uh just talks about his life and kind of goes through his experience but it's his personality that i think is really captivating um i think his smile is one of the most genuine things i've ever seen i like his disposition i like his perspective and so uh if you like listening to people talk about movies you may enjoy his personality and his perspective considering he is blind he hasn't updated in a while um that's something that you might notice he's gone i think back into radio he popped back up into my conscious because uh, he was doing a, a live Twitter Periscope type thing uh, a couple weeks back. And so I jumped on and was interacting with him in, in that forum. And he, like, it was just so cool to see him again. I was like, oh, my gosh, I haven't thought about him in so long. So a lot of his stuff is uh, is not regular. Then but he called you by name in the comments did. and you melted. Oh, my gosh. And- he did. I asked a question. He's like, oh, good question, Danae. Oh, Danae, what a great name. And I'm like, oh, Tommy Edison my dead. Danae dead on the floor. Dead on the floor. That's been happening to me a lot lately because I'll be watching like live videos and hangouts from even yeah. like, even the NADPOD, the NADDPOD for the D&D stuff that I do. Uh, one of the characters was doing a live stream and I helped him figure it out and he said my name and I'm like, <laughs> what? So it's so funny. Yeah. It's just weird how we are. My favorite poker uh, player on uh, the podcast that he's on uh, took my voicemail and gave me props on some things. And I'm just like, 
my Isn't it hero. funny? I know. It's so cool. So anyhow, my my solid recommendation for you is to go check out another YouTube channel this week. This time, Tommy Edison. Very nice. Uh, I am in the midst of screener season, which means I'm I think I, I think I was looking at my um, my spreadsheet of the movies I've seen. And in the last five days, I've seen nine movies. Um, it's just I just keep throwing movie in after movie. So you uh, and Janae are on chance. the same pace. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we av- we average, you know, right around four and a half movies for the week. <laughs> uh, so anyways, I have a lot to choose from, but I think what I'm going to go with is Marriage Story, uh, oh, which I'm really is excited about this. Adam Driver, Scarlett Johansson. It will be on Netflix here in a bit. It's in theater in, in very limited theaters is now. Is it Noah Baumbach? It's Noah Baumbach's okay, new great. movie. Yes. And I have a I think for the most part, I've really liked Baumbach's stuff, mm-hmm. uh, especially recently. And uh, this is his best, easily, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it is it is the most moving uh, film I've seen uh, in years. Um, I was weeping a couple times in this movie by how real it felt. Uh, Adam Driver's performance is astonishing. Um, he is incredible in this film. Scarlett Johansson is great as well. The movie is about their divorce. And it is such a real and genuine look at the trauma of separation, Mm -hmm. even when both parties feel like it's necessary, just the the ripping apart and how difficult it is. It does this this really incredible thing um, where it really leans into the nitty gritty, uh, almost mundane details of divorce. Um, but it does it in a way that just puts you in in their world. Um, some of the stuff with the attorneys, some of the stuff with the conversation, some of the stuff with their kid, because they also have a kid, which is part of this. Um, it's just, it's it's so good. It, it's the emotion in it is just palpable. There is there is an argument scene in this movie um, that dis- like just destroyed me. I, I just, I came away from it. And I know this, it's weird recommending something that's going to destroy you, uh, but it's, yeah, it sounds great. It it is. It really is. It's so worth it. Um, but for someone who fears emotion, um, well, like fear, <laughs> and it sounds like I hear you challenging as a, me as a child of divorce, though, and as someone who's been divorced, um, it it really it's really uh, most movies get it very wrong. Like both sides of that, being a child yeah. in the situation or actually being the person getting divorced. Um, that's all I've heard about this is that this just absolutely nails it. And uh, I, that's why I'm really curious to see it. I mean, I'm it sure is, it's going to bring up a lot of emotions for me, but um, I'm, I'm definitely going to check it out. And I love Noah Baumbach. I, um, I, I was not prepared for how invested I was going to be in these characters. I, I just, I wasn't, it's, it's a, it's just so expertly done. And if you are the kind of person who, um, values the depth and emotion on all sides of the human experience, um, I think there's a, a lot of value in experiencing this movie and hearing their stories. Um, so yeah, that's just called marriage story. And again, it'll be on Netflix here in a few weeks. Um, so everybody should be able to check it out. There's Except a lot of good today. stuff coming out on Netflix here in the next few weeks. I know, right? Because we got Irishman, <laughs> Two Popes. Yeah, I think Netflix is going to have three movies, not at least three movies. If if uh, Dolomite somehow sneaks in, they may have four movies nominated for Best Picture this year. Well, and and at the very least with Dolomite, it sounds like Eddie Murphy's going to have some consideration. He's, and, he's definitely running. He, yeah. You know, he's... He's in the mix. So so there you go. Yeah. Marriage Story is definitely one I would recommend check out unless your name's Danae and, and you, you don't like emotion and you don't want to experience but any emotion. Don't judge me. <laughs> Just for instance, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire is not a good example of divorce. <laughs> oh. Wait, Jonathan, are you telling wow. me you didn't dress in drag and spy on your ex-wife as she went on with her life? No, I did not. Okay. Nor did no. my dad do that after my parents got divorced. Well, that's weird, man. That's, that is, that is everything I know that about movie, divorce. I, I learned from Mrs. You, like, that was the first time I think, and movies don't usually make me mad. That I can remember, I was a teenager, I guess, when that came out. I remember that movie just pissed me off because <laughs> I was like, as somebody that was, had been in that situation, I was just like, "This is so stupid. Like, why? This is why not do how people any of like this?" this? <laughs> yeah. Yes, 
Totally understand. <laughs> totally understand. Well, that's going to wrap it up for Behind the Scenes this week. Don't forget to make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. Go ahead, leave a comment or rating as well. Uh, you can hang out with us on Twitter. I am at Aaron Dicer. She is at Danae Says. That's D-E-N-E-E-S-A-Y-S. And he is at Sam Loomis 13. So for Jonathan Watkins, Danae Hughes, and myself, we'll see you next week. Interesting fact about Twitter. Uh, 50% of our audience follows all three of us on, on social media. How do you know that, Danae? The survey, which, by the <laughs> way, ends on Friday, the 29th of November, 2019. We would love to hear from you. And if we don't hear from you, we still love you. That's totally fine. But if you want to participate, you better go do it right now. Okay, bye. That's cinemasins.com slash BTS. Okay, this time I'm saying bye for real. Bye. Thanks for listening. Send any feedback to BehindTheSinsPod at gmail.com and be sure to subscribe or message us at Twitter and be sure to visit CinemaSins.com. Oh man, I shouldn't have showered because now I'm going to have that line in my hair from my headphones. Dang it. This is why you don't shower. Uh, this is too loud for me. Mm-hmm. Can, you, can you turn my headphones down? <laughs> Just before you turn my headphones down, <laughs> will you make the most disgusting noise possible? <laughs> <That's>... Yep. <laughs> you know, you know, it'd be one thing if you were doing that with your mouth. But the fact that you move the mic down to your butt. Oh, wow. You need help today. That is, <laughs> that is getting really juicy down there. <laughs> You may need another shower. I can't believe we're going back to Skype. There's going to be a delay again. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's going to be so awkward. Hello. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Danae was just saying talking to you is going to be so awkward this week. That's not what I was saying. <laughs> In regards to what? The delay on Skype specifically. I think I lost you guys. <laughs> Did we lose you? Hello. Okay, he's gone. That was comedic timing. As I said, the delay on Skype and he was just gone. The Skype shut down? <gasps> Why would it do that? Ma- maybe because I, I clicked the... <laughs> <laughs> You just <laughs> shut it off. <laughs> Poor Jonathan. Hey, what's up? <laughs> it's a good start. <laughs> We're both like, where did Jonathan go? It's like, oh, <laughs> I, 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 instead of minimizing Skype, I closed it. Did you like my tweet, Aaron? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really made me sad. I was like, oh, she saw Knives Out. This is going to be great. We'll talk about Knives Out. I wonder if she loved it. I wonder how much she loved it. Oh, she didn't see it. She's talking about stupid knives at her (laughs) table. Twitter was all like, don't spoil it for me. Don't spoil it for me. Everyone's talking about Knives Out. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it'd be kind of a fun way to troll a little bit. You're sounding better, Jonathan. Okay, cool. Yeah. I put my uh, I put the condom back on my mic. Oh, well, good. You don't want to have unprotected podcasting. Why do servers put sharp objects in front of infant children? They don't have kids. Is that it's just that simple? Or they're just not thinking about it. Yeah. Um, or, or you get hot like uh, the other thing is like uh, if they're like uh, coffee is another thing I find yeah. interesting. Like how they bring coffee to the table. Scalding liquid. Here you go, two yeah. year old. <laughs> well, like it. how they like yeah like some you'll see will like go around like before like they'll have it like the way they carry the coffee like they'll have it on the opposite side of them as they're passing the kid like that person obviously has children right yes you can but always tell who has just kids have it like wherever mm-hmm. and they could easily just pour coffee all over your kid yeah yeah i i, I mean that would be really mean we were at Disney World, go figure, and my daughter was like maybe, t- I think this was her first trip, so she was like 10 months, and um, just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she just like, she just like has this look on her face, and she just pulls this butter knife up, uh- like, like it, so like, she had gotten it for like, I guess they had set the silverware in front of her, and we hadn't noticed, and it was just, it was just a visual I will never get out of my head, it was, oh, it was so funny. I, I have one that's similar to that, that uh, when Iris was probably around the same, like 10 months old or something. Yeah. Justin was like holding her where she was sitting on the kitchen counter, but like 
she was facing him so she was okay or whatever mm-hmm. and she was within arm's reach of our butcher block so i say <laughs> hey justin she's really close to the knives and my husband yeah. does this mm-hmm. thing it's supposed it's supposed to be funny and maybe it's funny for you <laughs> But it drives me nuts. How many conversations have started with wives saying, my husband does this thing and it's supposed to be funny. It's supposed <laughs> to be hilarious. Here's what he does. He like, let's say anything is going to happen and I'm and I'm giving some sort of a warning. Like, uh, hey, you know, the baby is really close to the, the, the knives. And he says, eh, what's the worst thing that could happen? And as he is saying it, she whips out like the scream knife from the butcher <laughs> table and like, because she was only 10 months old, doesn't have any understanding of how to carefully wield Mm -hmm. a a knife. And so her arm flails upwards and Justin had to arc his head back to miss being stabbed in the face. And I will never forget the look on my husband's face as he realized, one, he almost died. And two, I was so right. And three, it's just not a moment to joke, buddy. (laughs) It's a moment to like bow in reverent awe of your (laughs) wife's wisdom, you know? Danae just tried to drink her coffee through her microphone. Shut up, Aaron. Listen, I don't feel well. <laughs> I, Shut up, Aaron. Shut up, Aaron. I have, um, I still have the chest thing going on. This like chest cold thing. Still yeah. hasn't gone away 100%. And then over the you weekend. You should go to the doctor and get antibiotics. I don't want to go to the doctor and get antibiotics. Well, then I don't enjoy your chest no, cold for the next three months. I don't need no antibiotics. My body will fight it off eventually. Or- <laughs> I decided to do this like deep clean push and try to organize and clean and i think i just pushed my body a little too hard and so by the evening yesterday my throat was raw and scratchy uh i was sneezing a whole bunch from all the dust that i had yeah i was gonna say dust does that to my wife yeah yeah Ah. me too so i'm hoping this isn't like actual sick i hope it's just like my body rejecting all of the dust that was on these books that i've had for i mean forever that they carry with them all the dust of all the houses I've ever lived in and also all the houses of all the places that they've ever been before that because yeah. I bought them at a used bookstore. So it's like I'm inhaling God knows what. Yeah. So. Yeah. The last time I was in any way, shape or form sick was about two years ago. Uh, and it was after we had been at the Syncast studios and I had been petting cats. I decided with cat allergies and no medicine, let, just go ahead and let's pet the cats for a little bit, Aaron. <laughs> Maybe it's allergies. I'm hoping it's allergies. And I'm hoping that um, next week when we record that um, Jonathan doesn't get to do I told you so. Like you should go to the doctor. (laughs) I think I know one of your your sins. You know how, um, Jonathan, you say that you know mine because I say I hate this or whatever. Oh, yeah. I know. I think I know yours. That's more from reading the script. (laughs) Okay, that's true. I think I know yours because you say 100%. Uh, I that think, usually, yeah, I believe that's, that's a me thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. Like that's 100% of sin. Yeah. A hundred percent of sin. I was like, that's Jonathan. So whenever <laughs> yeah. I was watching the Hulk, I was like, I think I know who did that one. I mean, it's possible. Cause just like everything else, I feel like we all kind of start taking on everybody's stuff. So like, right. Like we'll start writing stuff, you know, so it's possible like somebody else has done that since, but on that one specifically, I'm almost positive that was me. Yeah. I'm hundred percent. That was I'm you. I'm a hundred percent. Are we ready for this week's uh, edition of Things Aaron's Kids Said? Already? Sure. You do every week you do this because you hear it in the outtakes when you listen to the episode Uh and then you're like, I'm ready, Aaron. No, let me let me just check my attitude. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! Let's do it. This is from uh, my oldest when he was 12. Uh, Austin said, is it a racist thing to say I noticed that five sixths of the competition today at the math tournament were Asian? Me. No, but it sure is a math tournament way to say it. (laughs) (laughs) That was more about you. (laughs) All right. I got another one because you guys didn't like that one enough. So we'll do another one. Oh, my gosh. You can't do this. No, we're going to until you laugh. Until you laugh heartily. Oh, no. I'm not in the mood to laugh. (laughs) (laughs) Just throw that in somewhere. (laughs) It's it's good to be recording a podcast with you today, Danae. I'm grumpy and I don't want to laugh. I don't want to be here. That's a joke. I, I love being here. Okay, bye. Uh, Austin, 12 years old, says, Our number system should be base 1,000 instead of base 10 because the commas would make it easier to write numbers in other bases over 10. Me. Uh-huh. Also, have you ever noticed how funny a two looks when you really stare at it for a while? <laughs> nice. 
And he grew up to be a normal person. Are you insinuating <laughs> that you can't love math and grow up to be a nope. super cool person? That is exactly what I'm saying. No. <laughs> Welcome to the Behind the Sins, where we talk about our dysfunctional relationships. Is that what that Behind our, the Sin is now? <laughs> knowing no, that but... our spouses never listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> I do know one of our spouses uh, listens to the podcast, so I'll just take this opportunity to say that I have a beautiful and amazing wife, and we never have any issues in our relationship whatsoever. And she's have never your argued once. <laughs> she's my current girlfriend and wife. All right, we ready to get moving, Danae? Shall we? I'm I'm on Snapchat looking at filters. Oh, okay. Well, that seems like a useful hey, listen, way to spend just, your time. We're just goof farting around so- at this point. Danae, just let us know when you're done with your I'm, gaming. I'm ready. I'm ready whenever. But you're gaming. I'm just goofing off. Okay. Go ahead. All right. I'm literally waiting for you. Fair enough. <clears throat> hey, could you hold on? I'm about to win. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> <laughs>